this program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. This is Rogers TV. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, some people used the A word. They called it an accident, but it wasn't. An accident implies that no one was at fault. But when someone impaired by alcohol and or drugs chooses to drive, they are fully responsible for the crash that can result. So please, for the memory of my brother DJ and the thousands of families whose lives have been shattered by impaired drivers, let's drop the A word. A crash caused by impaired driving is not an accident. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. boys are back echoing through the CBS arena earlier this evening and boy it doesn't get any more true than that the boys are back the Newfoundland Growlers are here welcome viewers on Rogers TV and those around the world on YouTube this is gonna be a big one between the Newfoundland Growlers and the visiting Adirondack Thunder I'm Bill Hartz along with the newest member of the Growlers broadcast team Den Murphy Bill, thank you so much, and thanks for having me here tonight. 608 days since the Newfoundland Growlers have last played a hockey game here in Newfoundland and Labrador. As you can hear, an electric crowd in Conception Bay South tonight at the CBS Arena. A perfect 4-0 start for this Newfoundland Growlers team this season, and they've gotten out to a fast start in each of those four games so far, which is going to be a key to success for them here again tonight. We'll see if that's the case. Another thing about this Growlers team is they're fast. They are. They're fast each and every year, and they're going to be fast again this year. All right, the festivities are underway, so let's go to ice level and get this action underway tonight on Rogers TV. These guys have had one road trip, and Marcus Power gets announced here in front of the hometown crowd. The other half of the Super Nukes, Jack O'Brien is back with one of the best mustaches I have to say I've ever seen. Looks like Super Mario. Darian Plouf returns to the Crawlers. <laughs> and almost as big a roar for Todd Skirving as it was the native Newfoundlanders. I think it's uh, only fair that he's officially a, an, a, an adopted Newfoundlander at this point. I was thinking that today, you know, when you think of the Newfoundland Growlers, there's many names that come to mind, but Todd Skirving is always one of them. You're absolutely right. Number 17, Ty Pelton Bice from the Manitoba Moose. Also reassigned from the Manitoba Moose, Tristan Palmerlo, former UNB Red. Coming off a successful season with them, I think they had just won the U Sport Cup when he was with them there, and that was a big season. Gordy Green, number 19. Isaac Johnson. Back for his second straight game. Two goals in his first. Noel Hoffenmeyer. Ryan Chizowski back from the Toronto Marlies. Played all four games for Newfoundland, then was recalled and sent back just in time. Mark Johnstone. Riley McCourt. Number 29, Oren Santazzo. 
Everyone else has got good mustaches going. Oren's got some solid flow. I Oh, the best, the best going. Your goaltenders, Evan Cormier. And number 35, your reigning ECHL goaltender of the month. That's Keith Petrozelli. And waiting in the wings. Your captain, it's number 43. Listen to this crowd. James Melindy. Coming out of partial retirement, I suppose. There was uh, a lot of uh, swirling rumors that James had uh, moved on from hockey to take a job with the fire department. The, the fire department part is true. I was going to say, he did graduate this he summer with St. John's did. Regional. And uh, he's definitely done his part, done his hours there. But happy to see him back on the ice. He's the veteran, of course, amongst this crew here. He's also a veteran at defending. We've seen him last, not last season, previous seasons, of course, doing what he does best, and that's sending a message. And for my money, seeing him through the first four games of the season, I don't know if it's the firefighting or what it's been. Uh, James has never looked so good so early in a season. He looks lean, he looks mean, he's he's mobile. He's he, Every part of his game looks as sharp as I've ever seen it. Uh, throughout his Growlers tenure. So lots to get excited about through this uh, lineup. And uh, for here, our opening game at home. And I'm gonna give a shout out to absolutely everybody who was involved in getting us set up here at CBS Arena. The crew at Rogers Television, they've been amazing. Uh, the crew at the town of Conception Bay South, uh, our own staff bending over backwards. Uh, our ticket staff needs their own set of, of kudos for what they've done trying to Get it all over. Lawrence Gilman, he's on the ice right now uh, from the Toronto Maple Police. Darren Bent, the mayor of Conception Bay South, gets a nice ovation as well. A lot went into tonight, and I don't think that could be understated at all. I mean, to have this crowd here, to be able to drop the puck in Newfoundland and Labrador after 608 days, you know, I don't think anyone is going to forget the next hour and a half, two hours here. You're absolutely right. So we have a ceremonial puck drop. Dean McDonald joins the bunch at center ice as Peter MacArthur and James Melindy. Take the puck drop. It wouldn't be an opening night without some photos. You got to mark the event. Oh, of course. course. Dean McDonald sporting his his Growlers Championship ring that he also wore for the puck drops in Iowa and Trois Rivières. <laughs> Love it. Time for the national anthem. Oh, 
Welcome back inside Conception Bay South Arena. Your temporary home for your Newfoundland Growlers and all that's left is the hockey. Oh, I think so anyway. Oh no, we're doing the Ode. Oh, what how did I? Newfoundlander are you? Welcome back to CBS Arena, home of your Newfoundland Growlers. As Dean McDonald, Darren Bent, and Lawrence Gilman make their way off the ice. Let's go already. Both teams getting their legs moving here a little bit. Trying to get a glimpse of tonight's starting lineup. Get off the ice, boys. Everyone's too eager. They want a part of this. No kidding. Starting in goal, I think I was fed some misinformation because we have got Keith Petrozelli in goal for Newfoundland tonight, wearing number 35. He's starting between the pipes. In front of him to start us off is number 18, Tristan Pomerlow, and he'll be flanked by the captain, number 43, Ghoul's own, James Melindy. Up front, I absolutely love this unit. Number 15, honorary Newfoundlander, Todd Skirving. And he will be joined by the Super Noofs, number 10, Zach O'Brien. And number nine, Marcus Power. Tonight's referee is Alex Norman and the linesman. If you're a fan of Newfoundland hockey, you've heard these names. Joey Maynard and Jimmy Vale, they're back. Merrick Smitten's in goal for the Adirondack Thunder against Keith Petrozelli. I'm Chris Ballard, she's Kellyanne Roberts. You're tuned in to Newfoundland Growlers Hockey at home for the first time in 608 days as they fire it over the glass six seconds in. <laughs> A quick start there. But it means another quick face off just outside of Adirondack zone there, which gives the offense Newfoundland Growlers, which is a full Newfoundland lineup essentially at this point. We're I absolutely throwing love scarves it. in there as a full Newfoundlander at this point now. Pretty much. He's not normally centering O'Brien in power, but maybe that could be a, a ceremonial thing to get the crowd fired up here. James Valindi throws a giant hit, knocking Rivera into next week. Play continues. Soft shot toward the front of the cage, partially turned over and fired wide by Rivera. Skirving along the right wing boards as we finally get into some real action. Now O'Brien, he's in a one-on-one -on -one break back the other way by Thompson knocked down. Along the left wing board, Skirving takes a tumble but sends it back into his own zone. James Melindy between the hash marks. The Crawlers in their black jerseys with white and gold trim, black pants, black helmets. The Adirondack Thunder tonight, white jerseys with gold, sorry, black. Oh, and a big open ice hit there by Hellickson on his first shift as Chazowski turns it back in. And we have a man down behind the play. It's Hellickson. Yeah, he got knocked there pretty good, and you could see he had no idea that was coming. Looked to get up there, but just doesn't seem to have his center with him right now. Getting some help there on the ice. Of course, the guy's coming down in support, but he absolutely did not see that hit coming. No, and the play had gone back the other way. I didn't even really... Get a chance to catch that one. He is down on one knee, being tended by the team trainer, Neil Davidson. He came to peel out from the board there, looking to pick up the pass that Melindy had given and to forward on the breakout pass. But before he could really turn, just took the hit in full as his head came to the right there. And so, of course, a full blind side and then feet off the ice as he came down. But getting up here, you can hear the crowd giving him that boost. Tough start to his growler's career, less than a minute into his first game with the club. Takes a hit. 
But we will press on, 1904 remaining here in the opening period, still no score. Chris Ballard and Kellyanne Roberts with the call as Ryan Chazowski wins it back for Hoffenmeyer. He'll send it in. Rolls behind the cage into the right wing corner. Bounces around along the end boards and out to center. It's poked by the Thunder. McCourt back in his own zone trying to keep Kaplan at bay. He'll drive him into the end boards. The Thunder trying to come away with the puck. The net's knocked off its pegs. Nope. Play continues as Isaac Johnson looks to sneak in behind the defense in the right wing corner. He'll absorb a check, left the puck behind. It rolls into the left wing side, collected in by the Thunder, but a nice play by Gordy Green to get it back in deep as the defense head off for a line change. But Adirondack trying to catch him napping here as LaBerge in over the line, a soft shot off the paddle of Petruzzelli into the corner. Physical start to this game, Adirondack knows uh, they might have to play this style of game if they wish to beat the Growlers here. And Isaac Johnson sends this one in. Shots are one nothing in favor of Adirondack. As it's stolen away by the Growlers, that's Orenson Tazo plays it back down low. Leaving that puck behind is Mark Johnstone almost dangerously out in front. Good pocket pick there. The Growlers hold the line, but Darian Plouffe lost it in his skates. And Ivan Chukarov sends it ahead. Three on two, that one stolen away by Brennan Kapchek, and he'll rev the engines out of the zone himself. Johnstone just got a piece of his man. Darian Bluff beats out the icing. Fast pace in the opening two and a half minutes here. The Growlers get it back in, and Sentazzo heads off for a line change. But O'Brien holds the line off his stick, kept in yet again by Hoffenmeyer. But Long gets it back for Adirondack, and in come the Thunder three wide. MacArthur, his shot off the outside of the blocker of Petrozelli. Loose side door. Petrozelli had his stick ripped out of his hands. The Growlers get it to the line. And it's knocked right back in by the Thunder. Petrozelli just now getting his hands back on his goal stick as Pelton bites, weaves his way into the offensive zone, hands off on the left-hand side, that pass off a stick, and back come the Thunder again. They'll clear to center ice. Zach O'Brien's the first one back inside Newfoundland territory, 3-10 gone. Here in the opening period as O'Brien hits center ice, carries, lifts it into the air, flipped it in on Mittens, and he'll hang on. With his Love it, 16-43 remaining. They call that a shot on goal for Newfoundland, so 2-1 are the shots for Adirondack here in the very early stages. And Kellyanne, great pace here so far, both sides. Quick, quick pace hockey here. Growler's looking to do just a little bit too much right now in front, looking for that extra pass, and I think really looking for that far pad instead. Might put us up one on the board. Gordy Green off the draw from Chizowski. Puck still loose in the high slot. Poke free, and the Growlers pick it up. Chizowski sends one wide of the cage off the end boards. Brennan Kapchek is there. He'll send it down low. Oh, dangerous play out in front, a hit behind. Isaac Johnson has the catch back up as the Thunder. Great hustle there by Chizowski to send it back to center. Carried back in, and that's offside as Isaac Johnson tried to hold his ground, but he took a hit clean to the chest, and he is taking a moment to get himself back to the bench. It's a physical game, and I think it's going to remain that way, and I think the Thunder know that if they want to stay in this, although it's still 0-0, they're going to have to, to throw their weight around a little bit here and start to get a bit gritty. Darian Plouffe from the faceoff outside the Newfoundland blue line. He'll win it cleanly back alongside Petrozelli and leaves it for James Melindy. He'll hand it back for Plouffe, flipped ahead for Johnstone. What a feed, and in comes Palmer Low off the line. High slot for Plouffe. His shot, there's a rip in front of Scarving. He barrels in through the blue paint. And no harm done as the Thunder hit center ice and lift it back in. Bounced off the end boards, freed up John Stone. Can't get it out. Kept alive into the slot. That shot blocked in front by Malindi as the Thunder buzzing, looking to open the scoring here like they did in their own home opener against the Newfoundland Growlers. Comes out in front. Back to the line for Chukarov, right-hand side, another great block by Palmer Low as he pulls it off the inboards but had it stolen back. Centering pass, a weak one stolen by Newfoundland. Palmer Low, Melindy battling hard, and finally, the puck is left behind for Darian Bluff. He'll settle it back for the captain, Melindy. He'll sling one into neutral ice. Skate to stick by Robbie Payne. He'll roll it in deep. Melindy got there first. That frustrated the heck out of Payne down there. And he he took that frustration out on Brennan Kapchak as play continues. Approaching the five minute mark, Thompson couldn't hold the line. And Adirondack ends up inside their own blue line, backpedaling, sending a pass ahead 
Payne will knife that one in deep. Shots two apiece, five minutes gone here in the opening period from CBS Arena. Here in Conception Bay, South New Finland and Labrador. And in come the Crowlers on a partial odd man rush. O'Brien into the left wing corner, up top for Hoffenmeyer. Rebound loose in front of the penalty coming up to the Thunder. Marcus Power was hauled down in a heap. The Crowlers will get a chance to work on their much maligned power play. As good as the Crowler's offense has been, their power play has clicked only once on 22 opportunities. Now, that comes out to a 5.6% efficiency rating, and uh, it's only a matter of time before the Crowlers really make a difference up a bit. Really starting to generate some opportunities there. That was twice there in the span of three minutes, that high slot, and then, of course, going to the point, looking for those rebounds. So some solid opportunities here, hoping the Growlers look to capitalize on that here now. And the face-off, one back pocket. Newfoundland, top of the circle and now down low. That's Chisowski walking behind and leaves it for Isaac Johnson. Johnson trying to feed it back down low. That's intercepted and cleared the length of the ice by Keith Petrozelli, a marvelous puck handler in his own right. And away comes Brennan, cap check. Weaves his way himself all the way into the offensive zone. Cap check. Had it knocked off the end of his stick. What a play. Behind the net, puck still loose. And the Crowlers pull it away. Chazowski remains in a battle, but it'll be held by Kapchak. Kapchak walks into the left right wing corner, keeps it away from his man. He's knocked to the ice. Gordy Green steps in to help him out. Big battle ensues in the right wing corner, knocked down by the Thunder toward the line. Kapchak holds it in again. 107 to go in the man advantage. The Growlers still have it in the offensive zone. They lose possession, and it's cleared by the Thunder. Working to generate some opportunities there. The Growlers looking to really capitalize with their defensemen. We're seeing Kapchuk really move the puck really well, really offensive but aggressive with it. Speaking of offensive from the blue line, Riley McCourt trying to do the same thing as he jumps in for a rush, sending that one wide of the cage. Held in by O'Brien on the right wing side. He'll leave it. Back up top, Pomerlo. Rolling puck. Sorry, that is Noel Hoffenmeyer. Wheels his way back to the line, handing it off. There's McCourt with it again. Cross ice. Find Zach O'Brien with a crisp pass. Hoffenmeyer across for McCourt. McCourt down low and into the corner. Marcus Power out the other side and up top again. Hoffenmeyer the drive. That one blocked in front. 18 seconds to go on the man advantage. Back up for Hoffenmeyer again. Into the slot, but off the stick of Pelton Bice. He'll chase down his man in the corner. That'll be rifled away by the Thunder. Right in on Keith Petrozelli. Five seconds to go, but a great feed. And O'Brien's in, and they're going to say offside. I don't think so. I wouldn't bet my money on it. 12.42 to go here. One second left on the penalty to Blake Thompson, but the Crowlers getting that momentum going, but still nothing to show for it. No score. A lot of great puck movement, really moving the puck around, trying to collapse their Thunder's penalty kill. And look, just look, when they look to have done it, Hoffenmeyer looks like it was deflected just off the outside of the net there. But outside of that, not many other great shots on net through that power play. Well, lots of chances, but not a lot on to the shot clock as play continues here. Palmer low. He absorbed a bit of an elbow there as he tries to fight for that puck back. Rolls into the corner. Mark Johnstone gets it. What a feed ahead for Plouf. Plouf's going to try to beat his man wide. Had it, lost it, and steals it right back. Plouf in the right wing corner. Slings away from a hip behind the net. Freed up for Johnstone. Off the boards and back. Into the high slot, redirected in front, stopped by Mittens, and cleared away beyond the outstretched stick of James Melindy. That'll be an icing against Adirondack with 7.58 gone here in the opening break. Growlers leading in shots right now, 4-2 over the Thunder, and two of those shots coming in the last 45 seconds here. Some solid opportunities starting to really generate. The Growlers looking to move the puck. It looks like the Thunder have eased off of their grit a little yeah. bit there. Well, that's a that's a great observation. You're absolutely right, but it it's hard to play that style when it's the Growlers who have their speed going. Pulled away off the end boards by Chisowski, but it ends up back in neutral ice. McCourt leaves it for cap check through the middle. A great feed for Johnson. He has some room down the left hand side. Backhand swings away from a check. Beautiful pass up top for cap check. Cap check ran out of room. He'll send it down low behind the net. Johnson is there. Tried to center it, left it behind for Gordy Green. Green sends it back for Johnson. He's being watched closely down there as Colin Long steals, tries to get it out. 
Gets it toward the line and another great steal by Newfoundland, really not letting the Thunder get much going in their offensive zone. And now Gordy Green's gonna try and catch the Thunder. Napping on a line change. He's hauled down behind the play as the Thunder turn it back. Over the line with a soft backhander is Robbie Payne, played behind the net by Petrozelli. Up top, there's a shot blocked in front by Petrozelli. Rebound comes away, and now Johnson, they got a man! It comes Marcus Power, all alone, and a right pad save made by Mittens. The roof ready to come off this place when the Crowlers finally score. O'Brien in drive, that one over the cage and out of play. And that slap shot we just saw from Zach O'Brien, we're gonna talk our way through this TV timeout is a new club in the bag for Zach O'Brien, if you will. He always had a good slap shot, but I don't know if he's been working on it extra or what, but normally Zach is the, the wrister, the little snapper. He pulls he, it in a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, he's got that Austin Matthews kind of toe drag quick release, but that slapper, I've seen him do it a lot in practice and a lot through the first four games. That's an added tool in the old toolkit this year. Let me tell you. It's a quick, it's a quick slap shot too, which I think is a lot underestimated by a lot of players. They want that big, long wind up when it's not necessary. And Zach really capitalizing on that. There, we've seen him in the high slot several times in this period, and several great chances. One of those. ECHL goaltender of the week for the week in which he played his two games and that was apparently a big enough body of work to earn him goaltender of the month for the month of October making him the third goaltender in Growler's team history uh, to win uh, that honor. Maybe some trivia. Do you remember who the first two are? Don't put me on the spot here. It was Mike, <laughs> I know. It's, it's game one. That was mean. Uh, Michael Gartag, of course, of course, in the opening season uh, in November, I want to say. And then in February of that same season, Eamon McAdam. So the Growlers, two of the, how many months are in a season? Eight? Maybe, we'll if go that, with that. Sure. Yeah, that's one. Math is not my strong suit. <laughs> that's why we're in the in the booth here calling sports as it comes back to center. Brennan cap check. 10.45 to go. The Growlers get that one in deep, and O'Brien gives chase. He's tied up. Puck comes loose, taken by Marcus Power. One hand on the stick, trying to flip it out in front. That's going to be stolen away. LeBear sends it to center ice. Skating ahead to pick that one up is Chukarov joining the play. He'll send it in deep. Petrozelli behind his cage. They have turned it over, but it's stolen back anyway. Away comes Pelton Bice. Ty Pelton Bice in over the line. Onside, left hand corner, tried to center it into the slot for Power. That got blocked away. Played up towards center, carrying this one away. Kaplan. Joe Masonis, he's bodied hard there, but they're gonna call Noel Hoffenmeyer. He held on to him for a little while there. He kept his hand out. I mean, you could have let it go. They're gonna call it interference. I mean, the Growlers do their best work on the penalty kill. We've seen that, it's oh, efficient. You're darn right, 95.5% efficient, allowing just one power play goal against on uh, but uh, four shorthanded goals. <laughs> so maybe we'll see one of those here now. I know that wouldn't, uh, I think they'll they'll hear us out in, out in Cornerbrook if the buys score <laughs> shorthanded here on this one. MacArthur, his shot off a stick and wide. Melindy gets to it first, chipped it toward the line, and now we got a shorthanded break. Away comes Darian Plouffe in a partial odd man rush. Puts it in off the outside of the cage as he was muscled off the puck. 20 seconds gone on the minor penalty to Hoffenmeyer. The Growlers, Pomerlo, a nice long stick there to get control and clear the zone, much to the delight of the sold out crowd here at CBS Arena. Pass knocked away by McCork, sent back all the way back inside the Adirondack zone, unable to play that. Growlers already burning through 40 seconds of this power play for the Thunder, and I don't know if the puck has really been in the Growlers zone yet. They're absolutely right, in they come. Colin Long rolls it into the left wing corner, taken by Rizek. Rizek gets it back from Payne and sends it up top for Masonis. Across, Masonis gets it back. 
Across for a one-timer and a left pad save. Bounces right back to Rizik. Another try, a great block by Skirving. Centering feed again, a missile, that one missed. Rizik again, cross ice. Pass, bounce to Rob Petrozelli. Knocks it out of midair with the blocker, what a save. Down low, Rizik, good puck movement here as the net is off its pegs, firing it after the whistle was Joe Masonis. Only 34 seconds of time left. And now Chazowski going to remind Colin Long, I believe it is, that, uh, hey, keep it between the whistles, friend. Going over to the Growler's bench there, maybe trying to, to say a few quick words there as the faceoff is now going to be on the far side of the Growler's zone there as they got 34 seconds remaining in this penalty kill and Hoffenmeyer just taking a break right now. To the left of Petruzzelli we go. On the draw for Newfoundland, winning it cleanly is Skirving. Played ahead, a nice backhand clear by Riley McCourt and Thompson. Almost had it stolen by Chizowski, but MacArthur gets set for Adirondack, poked away again by Melindy and swept away by Johnstone and stolen by Melindy. He'll join the rush, he'll send it in. 12 seconds to go on the minor penalty to Noel Hoffenmeyer. 8-10 remaining, in come the Thunder on side, across, and that one a field goal, six feet over the cage. Played in, here comes Hoffenmeyer, trying to get him the puck, sploof, ahead, Hoffenmeyer, his shot, nice recovery by the defense, off his stick, and out of play. A couple of late shots on the power play for Adirondack, but nothing that was gonna come close to beating Keith Petruzzelli, 7.57 to go here. In the first period, still no score. Defense from both sides really gets their sticks on pucks here. We're seeing a lot of them, of course, going up into the netting, but that's just, rather than getting a knee in front of it, getting a stick there, anything to keep it from getting to the front of the net. Face off one by the Thunder, cross ice feed. That's knifed in deep by Smith. Melindy gets to it first, Smith stays on him. Melindy tried to pin it to the inside boards, loose in front of the goal. And no shot there by the Thunder as they whip it back to the point. Comes across to the left-hand side, Leidsman fires wide. Off the end boards again, Marcus Power had it knocked off his stick. Sent through the blue paint and out the other side. And once again, the net knocked off its pegs by Petrozelli. And Carrier might be chirping Petrozelli down there. It is the second time that the net has been knocked off. That one didn't take much, though. Petrozelli looking to push off from his left leg there, and I think he just caught the post with it. Him and the ref having a few words there about it as well, but it looks like we're going to see the face off on the blocker side or to the right of Petrozelli. On the ice for Newfoundland, seven and a half minutes to go. It's Pelt Vice, O'Brien, Power, Melindy, and Hoffenmeyer. You'll probably see a lot of different D combinations now from now to the end of the game because I'm not sure we're gonna see Matt Hellickson again. We haven't seen him back yet, and I don't think he's on the bench there, which is not a good sign. Face off, pulled away by Newfoundland as Zach O'Brien tries to get out of the zone. He'll spin it away. Back to center ice for Pelton Bice. What a move to get by his man and find Melindy joining the rush. Melindy, poke checked off his stick, but it stayed inside the zone. Back down low for Pelton Bice, centering feed. That one had a lot of juice on it. To the line, Hoffenmeyer able to hold it in. Knocked at him in air by O'Brien, gets it in deep. Pelton Bice gets it and sends it across. James Melindy in on a partial break. He hits the goal post. And it's out of play with just under seven minutes to go. I would have went absolutely ballistic if James had just scored. If he scored the home opener first goal of the night, that would have. Oh, man. It would have written itself. In this building, like I actually think the roof may have fallen off. I think the building's a bit too new for that, I but it definitely so. would have shook. Face off to the left of Mittens. Gordy Crean on the draw, he's out with Chazowski. Johnson, cap check, and McCourt kept alive in the high slot. There's Johnson with a man draped all over him. He'll spin away and find some room, trying to center. They got blocked, but he picks it back up. Finds some free ice for cap check, a dangerous pass, but kept alive, the Crowlers are buzzing. High slot, Riley McCourt knocked off his stick, still loose, held in again by McCourt, but he boots it across just outside the line. He'll retreat back into neutral ice inside his own zone for Brennan Capcheck. Played ahead for Green. Green off the boards, beautiful behind between the legs feed. Finds Orin Tazo creeping into the offensive zone. 
Left wing corner, that's pushed away, and here come the Thunder. MacArthur, a one on three rush. Not liking his odds on that one, Peter MacArthur, as the Crowlers send it ahead. Johnson trying to get that long pass, couldn't reel it in. Thompson gets it instead. Shots are still 6 5 with 6.05 to go here in the first period as that one's booted in by Adirondack. Into the corner. Good pressure here by the Thunder, but dancing away with that puck is Mark Johnstone, not yet out. Noel Hoffenmeyer, he's pinned. Johnstone as well. Skirving frees it up. And now here come the Growlers again. Down the left wing side, Palmer Low. He'll hit the line and get it in deep. Behind the net we go. Thompson has his man Bonnie behind the Adirondack cage. Darian Plouffe once again pulls it away. He's interfered with no call as it's left there in the corner. The Thunder trying to recover here back on their heels. The Growlers head off for a line change and a big hit thrown by Skirving in the corner. Much to the delight of the fans here as Thompson slowly gets out to center and clears the zone. Melindy's back. He'll send it across quickly. Capjack rolled off the end of his stick. He'll still. Find a way to get it to center. Pelton Bice leaves it. Capcheck carries it. Right wing side into the corner. Got some speed. Capcheck behind the net. Tried to center. O'Brien is there. Penalty coming up on the play. Out in front. A big save there. The best of the night so far by Mittens. Finally touched up. So with under five to play. The Growler's speed is on display here. And drawn penalties. 4.56 to go. A tripping call has been made. And that as Samuel LaBerge heading to the penalty box. Growler's gonna have their second opportunity here for the power play. Really started to generate a lot of opportunities at the end of their last power play, and looking to translate that over now. Of course, we just saw three great opportunities in front. They're really looking to move the puck left to right into the high slot, looking to capitalize on some bodies in front, and almost doing so, of course. The Post also doing their job this game. There's been a yeah. few off of them. There are things in this world we cannot explain. Mysteries above and below. Forces that pull us together and draw us in. To bear witness as the natural world goes quietly into the night. Here in our own backyard. Right now, they're 6-6, but again, I wouldn't say that that's equivalent on the opportunities that we've seen on the ice. Petrozelli maybe seen three really good tests there, and of course, doing a great job on all three of them. And one Both of those of them was down. that fluttering blocker save as well. The puck kind of changed direction, and he had to almost smack it out of midair with the back of his hand. That was uh, hopefully a sign of many good things to come from this goaltender from Wilbraham, Mass uh, yeah, Massachusetts. You never want to see a lot of shots on your goalie, but at the same time, a few here and there to keep them warm, not a bad idea. Absolutely, and to the right of Mittens we go. Power, Pelton Bice, O'Brien, Hoffenmeyer, and McCourt. Face off one, Hoffenmeyer, back up top for O'Brien. 0 for 1 on the power play so far. O'Brien curls it in, and a big save, and it's held by Mittens. So silky, silky mitts coming from Zach O'Brien there, a bit of a drag into the middle. Using his great footwork, looking like he was going to go on the outside, really taking the defender there, but cutting inside. A few more bodies. Mittens, of course, not letting a rebound happen in this situation. Belton Weiss to take the draw. He'll advance it ahead. It's taken away by the Thunder. Off the ports. Glove down at the line. Held by Hoffenmeyer. Back down along the right wing boards. A little give and go. Comes to the line, but off the backhand of Hoffenmeyer's stick. He's back out at center and into his own zone. To Right up a play. 9-6 now the shots. Pelton Bice across for McCourt. He's pitchforked into the ice. No call there. And back shorthanded comes MacArthur. Great poke check by McCourt. Good. And he's driven into the boards again. Normandon's got his whistle in his pocket. As O'Brien is going to try and make him pay where it hurts. The scoreboard. Pelton Bice. Oh, a knee-on-knee -knee collision in toward the cage. O'Brien knocked it down. And it's off a stick and over the net. 103 to go in the man advantage as the Growlers look to settle it down and set it back up, but poked away by Hoffenmeyer. Now he's in a foot race for it. Smith's gonna get to it first. That one way up top and over the net. Really trying to go for that far glove side there on the backhand, but 
not the greatest angle to take that shot at. And Hoffenmeyer, he actually took the foot off the gas a little bit there, but you see LeBron James do the same thing when he's going for one of those patented uh, chase down blocks. That's almost what that was. That's super impressive, honestly. 30 seconds of power play time as Johnson gets by a man and turns it into a three on two. There's a rip. That one stopped by Mittens jumping into air to try to pick that one up was Rizek, but the Crowlers get it back. Gordy Green, 15 seconds to go on the man advantage. Surveys his options, finds Kapchek up top. He'll walk it into the left wing corner and hands it off. Back up top, it goes to Green. Green looking for a shooting lane. Walks wide on the right wing side. Centers off the stick. Another try, and that one is held. And Kapchek right in the middle, absorbing some abuse there from a much bigger skater than 11 6. The shots on goal for Newfoundland. And another good kill by the Adirondack Thunder. Growlers really looking to try to generate some opportunities there, but it's almost like they're waiting for the last 30 seconds of the power play to start moving the puck really well, looking for those open spots. Of course, we saw with looking for Santezo there in the center in the high slot and just didn't have enough of a stick on it to redirect it. But again, those last 30 seconds, a lot of great puck movement, hoping to translate that over to some five on five. Face off one again by the Growlers. There's a rip. That one didn't miss by much behind the net. Skirving try to backhand in front. That's stolen away in Masonis. Off the boards and out to center, bit of a bouncing puck there, calling for a high stick on the play was Palmer Lowe. That goes unnoticed as play continues. Taken away by Darian Plouffe. He'll spin away from a check and find his man Palmer Lowe heading towards center. Beautiful little toe track by the defender. And in come the Crowler. Skirving had it stolen. Now he's got to hurry back. MacArthur, cross ice feed, finds Mazza. What a poke check by Melindy and pouncing on the loose puck is Keith Petrozelli. At no point do you ever get the impression or the feel in this game so far that Melindy is panicking or stressed. You're seeing that maturity, that confidence. You're really seeing it down low behind the net when you've got players coming in. He's still taking his time and looking for that first really solid pass, which you will, of course, need when you're moving from defense to offense. And we're seeing that translated really well by James Melindy, of course, the captain of this team and the veteran on this team. And I think the other guys are really beginning to feed off of that. Off the draw, quick save made by Petruzzelli, and the second opportunity sent wide by Adirondack as they try and squeeze something out of this period. 2-10 remaining. Shots are 11-8 as the Thunder. That's ah, Kapchek. Trying to rip it free, it's taken, and now the Growlers come away with numbers yet again. Hoffenmeyer carries in and hands to O'Brien, right wing side. O'Brien into the circle, off a glove, wide of the cage. Oh, Hoffenmeyer! Looked like he absorbed a bit of an elbow there. Clearing attempt, held temporarily by Kapchek, but it's knocked off his stick. Adirondack finding that off, uh, sorry, that that gritty edge to their game, and Kapchek unable to do much there. Partial odd man rush. Oh, Melindy went for a check there, but Carrier just missed him. Loose in the corner in the Newfoundland zone, 90 seconds to go in the period. Leidsman turns it over, and Zach O'Brien gets away. A one-on-two rush. He'll bounce one in wide of the cage. Mittens thought he was going to hold it. Notice nobody was around. And he'll play it for his defenseman. Ryan Chizowski parked in front of Mittens as the Thunder break it out of their own zone. Right wing side. That's going to be off a of body. Delayed offside on the Thunder. They'll have to tag up with one minute to go. In the opening frame, here comes Gordy Green. Into the offensive zone, onside for Johnson. Into the high slot, Johnson steals it back, but it's knocked away. Here come the Thunder, Rivera. He's bodied by Melindy. Melindy almost got the worst of that one. Centering try, no harm done there. Wide off the end boards. 35 seconds to go, and Isaac Johnson gets it and looks up ice. Through the middle for Green, touch to free. In comes Mittens with a poke check, a second try. He fires it wide, that was Gordy Green. Winging one toward the cage is Johnson, 23 seconds to go. The Crowlers buzz it, they score! Isaac Johnson, and now we got some extra. Pushing and shoving after the whistle. The Crowlers draw first blood. Fans quick to their feet with that one there. They've been waiting for this. Many opportunities at the beginning of this period. Now finally coming to fruition. This crowd could not be more excited about it. Now, they've got Palmer Lowe leading the charge to the bench. Unfortunately, we don't, uh, well, you at home will get a replay. 
one nothing growlers well the old adage goes you don't want to allow a goal against in the first minute of a period or the last minute and uh, adirondack certainly uh gonna have uh, their head coach alex Lowe might have a lot to say in this first intermission to get through most of that period with the intensity that the growlers brought and then in the last final seconds not how you want to end the period. Of course, 19.4 seconds still left on the clock here. But the Growlers looking to remain on that high. Of course, breaking the goose egg for the home opener. 608 days since we've seen a goal in Newfoundland and Labrador from the Growlers. And if that is indeed Tristan Palmerlow's goal, that is his first as a professional. So we'll wait for the final announcement before we start getting crazy. It's the first pro goal for Tristan Palmerwolf. Makes sense, Todd Skirving looking to try to get that puck for him there. Here come the Crowlers looking for more. One second to go, and that's going to do it here. As, well, that's how you want to end a period at the very least. One nothing Newfoundland thanks to Tristan Palmerlow's first pro goal. Shots were 12-7 in that opening frame. And Kellyanne, I, I think this score could probably be a little more one-sided than it was but nonetheless you can't call that a bad period for Newfoundland oh absolutely not I mean the intensity the the quickness we just saw great puck movement all of it was really adding up to that moment there of course it just few opportunities before that where we really thought it was going in James Melindy of course coming down on the right side and that going off the post there but it was a power low who's getting his first as a professional like you mentioned of course beginning but it's hopefully the beginning of many for him here as a Newfoundland Growler, but the opportunities out there were continuous. Of course, Growlers out shooting the Thunder 12 to seven there, but that's not translating over to the opportunities like we mentioned. Of course, Growlers with a few more of those, but the Thunder did have, I want to say three or four solid for opportunities sure there, and they had a few that were trying to creep into the high slot like the Growlers have been doing, but they just couldn't keep up with the quickness and the speed that the Growlers really brought to that period. What we did see from the Thunder in the beginning was a very... Well, welcome back. We go into the first intermission, making the fans happy. A 1-0 score. The Newfoundland Growlers lead over the Adirondack Thunder. I'm Bill Hart, along with Ben Murphy. And you made the point that you noticed the speed of this team is very adamant so far. Yeah, and Bill, it's a big piece of the, for this team every single night when they take to the ice. Speed. This team has always been built about speed. When we go yep. back to the Kelly Cup run in year one, they were built around speed. Right. Year two, we thought, wow, this team's even faster. Mm -hmm. This year... They look even faster again. Speed is the name of the game for this team. We saw a couple of scoring chances in there. Both of those generated by speed off the rush. When this team's moving their feet and moving the puck, yep. good things start to happen, as yep. we just finally saw there at the very right. end of the period. All right, let's check out some highlights from that first period. We'll start with that hit on Hellickson uh, early in the first. Yeah, Matt Hellickson, just 23 years old. He was just sent down from the Toronto Marlies yesterday in the AHL. His first game as a Newfoundland growler here tonight. And unfortunately, that was a it was a tough smack there right at the beginning and a hard hit. But it almost yeah. looked accidental from both sides. Oh, yeah. It almost looked as, you yeah. know, neither player really saw the other coming. No, it's just uh, timing. Yeah, very much so. An unfortunate result. We haven't seen Hellickson return to the game no. yet in the first period. Uh, still waiting for an update on it. He'll return later. All right. So we did see a couple of scoring chances. We'll start with this one from the Newfoundland Growlers. And there you have it again then, Bill. It's that speed coming off the rush. We didn't quite catch it there right at the very beginning, but the speed coming off the rush when they're breaking out of their own zone and you see them moving the puck and moving the puck up ice, this team finds success immediately. It's a north-south game, and when they start to create that speed coming out of their own zone, they start to move the puck well, they generate scoring chances. The cycle game yes. is another big component for this team, as we did see in the first. Well, another side of that, and this no the next highlight that we saw with another scoring chance from the Newfoundland Growlers. And Bill, we come back to that same point. Speed, foot movement, puck movement. The cycle game. When we see this team cycling the puck, they start moving that puck down low, tight ice. They start to create scoring chances. The Ds start to yep. break down. And this Growler team doesn't need too many scoring chances to find the back of the net. No, and especially when you have an awesome goaltender backing you up. Uh, <laughs> this kid's pretty amazing. You're reigning ECHL uh, goaltender of the month. Uh, talk about this save right here, living up to the hype. 
just the athleticism there alone and to be able to keep track on the puck there through that flurry of both bodies, sticks, and then the puck pops up for him to be able to keep his eye on that and keep it out of the danger zone in that crease there. Just it just shows how dialed in Keith Petrozelli has been each and every night here so far this season. Two wins and just 1.00 goals against average, a .972 save percentage to start this season. As you mentioned, two goals against on go. what was 72 shots coming into this game. Man. And, you know, you see why he earned goalie yep. of the month. Well, a great addition to this Newfoundland Growler squad. Well, it was scoreless uh, after that, but before the end of the first period, Growlers got on the board. Yeah, and it was another scrambly play. Um, it seemed as if in this first period teams were gripping their sticks a little tight. Obviously there are some nerves in the building tonight. Of course the first home game in 608 right. days. So you know they're probably gripping the sticks a little bit tight. But again comes back to working that puck down low. They find their opportunities and Johnson was able to tap that one in there with just a few seconds left in the period. And we did see that scrum break out there right after. I go back to the speed again, Bill, because this Adirondack team is a bit older. They're a little bit slower in the grand scheme of things in the ECHL, which we're seeing get younger and younger every year. So that's why I keep going back to that speed, and I'll keep going back to it all night. Well, they said they announced Pomelo as the goal scorer in that one. It looked like Johnson was the one that put that in the back it of the did. net. It did. A little bit of confusion there. I'm sure we'll get some official confirmation on sure. who does get the goal credit on that, but yep. uh, we'll find out soon. All right, those are the highlights from the first period. We're we'll take a little break here, and we'll be back as the broadcast cast continues Newfoundland Growlers here on Rogers TV interest payments were going up creditors were calling I finally realized I needed help the people at Jameson knows where they really took care of me and I'm glad I chose a local solution I felt like they understood me better getting help with my debt has given me the energy the headspace and the time to make my dreams come true a chance to start again with knowledge support and people in your corner are you looking for that kind of help it's okay Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. I can't thank people enough for donating to the War Amps. If I could, I'd give every single donor a big hug because things that they've allowed these kids to do are amazing gives them the opportunity to experience life as everyone else would. They can do so much. They can play musical instruments, snowboarding, play hockey, kayak, swim. There's no doors being closed to them, and I find that amazing. It's affected my family in a way that we may never be able to thank you. Welcome back to the Rogers TV broadcast of the Newfoundland Growlers tonight against the Adirondack Thunder. I am joined by President COO of the Newfoundland Growlers, Glenn Stanford. And, uh, well, I guess it goes without saying, thank goodness there's hockey in Newfoundland. Yeah, like we were saying on our, uh, on our social media, 608 days was the last time we played. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously a, a, a welcome sight for us and I think a welcome sight for a lot of fans for uh, what we all went through over the last seems right. like uh, lifetime. It really has. For sure. Uh, how close were the Newfoundland Growlers to actually playing their home over in Toronto? Well, we were fairly close. I mean, when when the news came down, we had to, we obviously had to make a decision, and we made a decision within uh, within an hour and a half. And then, uh, uh, you know, to be honest with you, the more we thought about it, uh, it, it really wasn't fair to our players. Number one. Yeah. And number two to our fans because we were uh, we were putting our players in the situation where if we went up there, uh, they'd be you know two weeks in a homestand, running into two weeks on the road, and they're away for a month. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I learned pretty early in my life if you're going to eat crow, you better eat it early. <laughs> uh, so we made <laughs> we made a decision to uh, we made a decision to move back here and. As you see by the night, it's obviously the right decision. Yeah. Well, how quickly did the whole CBS Arena deal come together? Uh, probably within 12 hours, to be honest with wow. you. Wow. Uh, we made a decision Friday afternoon. We contacted uh, Mayor Bent uh, on Friday afternoon. Uh, I did a presentation to the mayor and council on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, they got back to me uh, pretty quick, and uh, we started, uh, we started the, the, the wheels in motion. And it's been a real credit to... Uh, 
It's been a real credit to everybody, to be quite honest with you. Not only uh, you know the fans here, uh, the, the town of CBS, and Mayor Bentley's council, and our own staff. Uh, what we pulled off here in a week is pretty amazing. Yeah, well, speaking of amazing, uh, how about the fans of the Newfoundland Growlers? Uh, the dedication and the love for this team, uh, unmatched in this league. It's amazing how they all stepped up and it was so some support. I think you would have played, you could have played in Labrador and somehow, some way, uh, the season ticket holders would find a way up there. Yeah, listen, it's been, uh, you know, they haven't only just been incredible, obviously, the last, uh, you know, when we won the Kelly Cup and, you know, during the pandemic, uh, uh, Growlers Nation was uh, was was yeah. was, uh, was uh, alive and well during that time, and uh, uh, and obviously uh, you know helped us uh, you know at least during that time keep some type of momentum, and then you know of course this year uh, you know trying to figure out how to put 5,000 people in a 1,000 seat building was pretty right. tough, but you know in the bottom line with it uh, we just made the decision that the season ticket holders were the ones that uh, that kind of stood by us, and then you know what you see here tonight is the. Uh, is the uh, sample of our season ticket holders, and they've been an absolutely wonderful group. Well, look, it's like this. You ask any season ticket holder, as far as we are all concerned, we are still the defending Kelly Cup champion, <laughs> even though we didn't finish the season last year. No one claims that cup until they beat the Newfoundland Growlers. Yeah, well, that's for sure. You know, we, we felt in our second year, uh, we had better than and again, listen, this year, you know, we, we feel we got a good team as, uh, again. You know, like, you know, everybody in October, November feels they got a team to go to the Kelly Cup Finals, and, and we're, we certainly do. We, uh, we like our team. We like the makeup of it, and uh, we like what Toronto did uh, for us and then putting uh, players on the ice and our coaching staff, new coaching staff, and it's, yeah. uh, you know, they're going to be an exciting team to watch all year, and uh, I think yeah. the fans are going to love it. Uh, I think we will. Well, if tonight is any indication, we've got some new faces, some old faces, and uh, together they, look like a, they really do look like an exciting team. Yeah, they share. They are. They're quick. Uh, you know, we, we we were fortunate enough to see them play up in Trois Rivières uh, when we opened up up there, and then we went to Iowa for other teams opener. But the team is quick. Uh, they're skilled. Uh, it's a good group. Uh, t t talking to uh, to Eric Wellwood, our coach. You know, he's happy with the, the makeup of the team, and. Uh, they're going to be exciting. They're going to be quick, and uh, I think it's going to be a great year. Well, Glenn Samper, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, thank you to the ownership and management of the staff, and uh, we look forward to a very successful and a uh, very exciting year of Newfoundland Growlers hockey. All right, appreciate it, Bill. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. You. All right, we'll be back in a moment as the broadcast continues here on Rogers TV. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosworthy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. Welcome to the traditional, ancestral, unceded territory of the Stalo people. The Stalo are people of the river. I'm so thankful for the courage and resiliency of our ancestors who lived on this land since time immemorial. Each of us have gifts from the Creator, and our Creator has a plan and purpose to be fulfilled in our territory. As we embrace our traditional teachings, we can lead the next generation into the fullness of what our Creator designed. Our shared history reveals a broken relationship. But as all Canadians commit to hear truth, acknowledge injustice, we can learn to walk in our traditional way, let's amount, with a good heart and a good mind. Then all of our lives will be enriched. Kwasai. Sometimes, you have 
have to go to work. All right, welcome back to the first intermission. If you are just joining us, Newfoundland Growlers up 1-0 after a late goal in the first. So exciting times. We've got some hockey in Newfoundland after over 600 days, as Glenn Stanford just informed us. It's, uh, it's been a long time since we saw the puck drop and we saw the colorful jerseys of our very own Newfoundland Growlers. Uh, checking out some scores from around the league of those teams in our North Division. These are the teams that we are going to be battling for playoff position with all year long. Uh, Reading is in 12 Riviera tonight. Uh, this could be a half an hour now for they're going to be starting. Uh, same for a late start with Florida and Maine as well, about a half hour start. Uh, we have some uh, listeners too, uh, viewers, that are uh, also, come on over here. We got uh, Ben, and we're going to call him Ben Dropkick Murphy is uh, with us as well. We're just talking about the scores. Uh, we're just talking to Glenn Stanford, as uh, you were just hearing, and the very proud of the fan base and how they all came together and how this all came together and how close the team actually were to being playing their games in Toronto. Yeah, we really, for a while, Bill, didn't think we were going to be here tonight and weren't really sure when we could be here doing this. Um, it really is something else to see all this come together. Talking with Chris Ballard, the Growlers broadcaster, he was saying how, you know, we were they were working all day and everything just finally came together at the last few minutes. Yes. And you can just feel the excitement in here tonight, can't you? It almost yeah. feels like before you get ready to play a game you know, yourself. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, this this town, after uh, feeling the, the rush of a Kelly Cup win, another deep playoff run is something that we all desire. But, uh, you know, it's like th this team looks like they have what it takes to do that. Based on just what we've seen so far, uh, the first four games, they're undefeated 4-0. Uh, the goaltending, the speed, the cycling of the puck, everything that you've noticed in that first intermission, very uh, evident here. Yeah, very much so, Bill. I mean, we saw on the Kelly Cup run how fortunate we were, and then we really got used to that standard of hockey yes. and that gold standard of winning. And, you know, in the COVID-interrupted season, the second season for the Growlers, yes. they really looked like a team that was going to defend that Kelly Cup. Yes. Now this year, again, chatting with Dean McDonald this morning, he said that he really believes this team's even faster yes. and might even be all around a little bit better than that Growlers Kelly Cup championship <laughs> team. I know, it's hard to believe right? that this team could be better and faster, but we are poised, I hope, for another long playoff run this spring well the excitement is just starting and I know there are a lot of fans watching on Rogers TV tonight and watching around the globe on YouTube that wish they could be here I mean we could probably fill the CBS arena ten times over Definitely. easily uh, I want to say hello to uh, Mark Krebs who's actually uh, watching in the US right now as we speak and to prove just to prove that this is truly an international broadcast let's say hello to Colin Mitchell who's watching from the UK tonight. Wow. Man, we're gonna get together for a spot of tea. We do that in Newfoundland too. Growlers Nation just yes. goes to show. That's right, it works out well. And a great story shared this week, in case you missed it. Uh, there was a couple from the mainland that watched that movie about the making of Come From Away. And after watching that, uh, his wife said, we have to go to Newfoundland. So he's a sports fan, and every time they plan a vacation, they try to see a sporting event. So they plan on coming to the home opener for the Newfoundland Growlers. Unfortunately, they're not playing at the Mary Brown Center, so tickets are hard to come by. He went on Facebook asking if anybody had tickets. He was swamped with people offering his tickets. He is in the crowd with his wife tonight, and we wanted to say thank you, Growler Nation, for just sticking together and allowing everybody, everyone, to enjoy some great Growlers hockey. Yeah, and Bill, there's a lot of people, like you already said, who would wish they could be here tonight. I mean, we've seen a packed Mary Brown Center in the past, thousands of people filling in through the doors, and there are thousands more who wish they could be here tonight. But like you said, it's mostly season ticket holders. Yes. Here tonight, we know the Growlers have well over a thousand season ticket holders, a very committed and passionate fan base. Yes. And I think now, after the first period, we've seen the team get those first game kind of yep. home opener jitters out, yep. gripping the sticks a little too tight. Yep. Now this period, I think we'll see the team kind of settle a little bit more, get back to their game, and we'll hopefully see that high-powered offense. All right, all right, let's go. Second period action getting underway. We throw it now to Chris Ball with the play-by-play -play as Rogers Hockey, the broadcast continues here on Rogers Television. Enjoy the game. We'll see you in the second intermission. 
I know uh, these 1,100 fans in attendance here are uh, ready to do some more hooting and hollering. And the Growlers will start the frame with Brennan Kapchek on the back end playing alongside Noel Hoffenmeyer. The Super Noofs, O'Brien and Power, will be playing with Ty Pelton Bice. Ty Pelton Bice getting a few opportunities there, really trying to quarterback a few of the plays there, coming in just inside the blue line and moving the puck really well. We're back underway as the first face off of the frame is won by the Thunder. Ryzik up on the right wing side for Grasso. He's bodied. Left the puck behind, Hoffenmeyer keeps an eye as Grasso peels out of the corner, leaves it, Ryzik, that's redirected wide. Off the end boards, O'Brien frees it up into the slot, a turnover, that one fired away. Good. Behind the net, still loose inside the Newfoundland zone, it comes to the line, Ryzik forced to send it in deep, Hoffenmeyer, he'll body his man, puck rolls to the opposite side corner, stays there, but pulled away by Pelton Bice, he'll turn it over, and a goal! The Adirondack Thunder, well, we said it last time, you don't want to allow a goal in the first minute or the last. And the Thunder make the Crawlers pay in a turnover. 1-1 on the eighth shot of the game for the Thunder. They really came out with that urgency and that momentum there right off the hop, looking to move the puck around really well, they, and they did. But for the Growlers, looking like they sat back on their heels just a little bit to start this period here. Not quite the same urgency and level of play that we had seen throughout the first period. So the Growlers, I think, kind of expecting that one there. They kind of sat on their heels a little bit, let the play come to them, and I think that'll switch here now as the game is evened up one apiece. Palmer Lowe off the draw. Played ahead and knifed in deep for Newfoundland. Gordy Green, he'll give chase into the corner. Nick Rivera unassisted for Adirondack as Palmer Lowe gets it in down low. Chizowski tried to poke it free for Johnson, Johnson comes away with it, into the slot, a one-timer for Gordy Green, that didn't miss by much. Cleared away toward the line, held in by Johnson, Johnson, what a toe drag to get by his man, Kaplan, tried to center but gets it right back, Palmer Lowe, snapped it back for him. Johnson, he's in a tough battle in the left wing corner, lifted away, knocked down by Palmer Lowe and kept, Johnson's hauled down and they're gonna blow the play dead on a hand pass. Growlers really looking to switch the gears in this game here, you know, coming out a little bit flat at the beginning of that second period. Looking to make up for that now. Most of the play here for the last minute and a half now, of course, in the Thunder zone. It's going to step just outside of it for this face-off. But outside of that puck movement, continuing a bit more for the Thunder this period than we saw in the first. Gary and Plouffe wins the draw as it's sent in on Mittens. He'll flip it aside, but Skirving's there for Newfoundland. Trying to bully his way behind the net. Left the puck behind. Nice hit thrown by Johnstone. And the Thunder try to come in with it, but it's out into neutral ice and a delayed offside. They're going to make that face off go deep by the looks of it here for that, too. Thunder's 29 pain. They're not too happy with that call. Face off to the right of their goaltender, Merrick's Mitten. He's made 12 saves so far tonight. Face off one back by the Thunder. There's the captain, MacArthur. Looking up ice, flipping it into the air, down into the right wing corner. Hoffenmeyer takes his man out, leaving the puck behind. Plouffe gets control and finds Hoffenmeyer sneaking away from his man. And now John Stoke. He'll pick it up and bully his way to the front of the cage. He's hauled down again, and a penalty coming up on the play. Thank goodness for that. Can't quite see who it is, but there is a growler crushed behind the net there. Oh my goodness, you're right. Kind of slid in there a little bit. Oof. That's Todd Scurving. Scurving. He's fine. He'll pop right back up. And heading to the penalty box is Ivan Chukarov, the former Worcester Railer. We're holding. The growlers would love to get that goal back. A 17.56 left here in the second. This will be their third opportunity now on the power play. We've seen them start to generate a lot of momentum at the back half of both power plays. We talked about this in the intermission, Chris, but really looking to see if they can spark things a little bit earlier, move the puck a little bit quicker earlier on to try to generate some opportunities. I also think the dam just has to be broken. Absolutely. You, you know, I just think, uh, well, let's see it. Here's Noel Hoffenmeyer, hands it off to O'Brien, feeds it in on goal. That one was stopped in front. O'Brien back up top. Hoffenmeyer, loose in the slot, and into the glove of Mittens, no rebound. 
Only Great idea for both plays there. Only 11 seconds gone as well. So just like you said, you got to get to the action a little quicker when you're starting the power play. And it's clear that Hoffenmeyer's job was to deliver the puck to the goal. And did exactly that. I mean, two solid opportunities there. A few sticks in front. Other than that, I don't know if Mittens would have had much of a chance. There's a lot of bodies there. I don't know if you could see much, really, which is why they're looking to quarterback things from a bit higher from the Growlers. Hoffenmeyer gets it back as the power play sets back up. There's McCork. Back up top to Hoffenmeyer. He'll hand it off. O'Brien waits, waits, fires. Pad save made by Mittens. Loose along the right wing boards. The Growlers can't keep it. It's cleared away. Still just 30 seconds gone. Petruzzelli plays it away in the corner for Hoffenmeyer. Hoffenmeyer takes a little bump there. The Growlers get it back. There's Zach O'Brien at his own blue line with some speed, cutting into the offensive zone. He'll cut in wide on the right wing side, still has the puck. O'Brien slams on the brakes, works it up top. Hoffenmeyer now across to McCourt, down low. Into the left wing corner, Marcus Power had his pocket pick. The Growlers hold the line, 105 to go on this man advantage. Three minutes gone in the period. Hoffenmeyer leaves it for O'Brien. Tried to toe drag around his man, but now it's stolen and skating away with some speed or the thunder. There's a shot attempt, that one blocked away. Clearing attempt along the end boards. Marcus Power leaves it ahead. O'Brien weaves his way. O'Brien for Hoffenmeyer on side. Into the slot for Power. Power waits, leaves for Pelton Bice. The pass back in the right wing corner finds Power. Power. Away from his man, through the slot. Pelton Bice had it, lost it, and it's cleared by the Thunder. 30 seconds to go. Irvine sends one through the blue paint, right to the tape of Isaac Johnson. And now the Growlers almost away with a two-on-one. But that's intercepted, and now rolling right in. Petrozelli to the hash marks. And it was knocked down by a high stick. The play is blown dead with 16 seconds left on this Growler power play. Growlers really trying to capitalize there from the top again, like you mentioned. But I think Zach Power, probably minute 30, was his time on the ice through that entire power play, taking all the opportunities that he could. But of course, now coming back down into the Growlers zone, the face-off, of course, happening to the blocker side of Petrozella. What we saw there as well was funny at one part. I, I can't remember which Thunder player it was, but no Growler player had come back from the puck, and he kind of put his hands up as in confusion rather than just going <laughs> for the puck. Jimmy Mazza fires it wide off the end boards, and Petruzzelli jumps on that one. So we'll have another offensive zone draw for the Thunder with 16.08 to go here in the second period. Chris Ballard and Kelly Ann Roberts here with you. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight on Rogers, on East Lake, on Mixler. If you're pirating the game somewhere, hey, we're just pumped that you're enjoying some uh, Newfoundland Growlers hockey for the first time in 608 days from this great province. Oh, and they're going to call Palmer Lowe for that. I don't really know if that was a true call there. It was like both guys knew that there was going to be a hit coming. Puck was in play. Interesting to see what the call actually is here. One second left in what would have been the Growlers power play, but now we'll go to four on four for one second before switching things over to the penalty kill, which the Growlers do a stellar job at. So it might be where they need to generate some more opportunities, see some more puck movement. We've eased off that just a little bit. Face off to the right of Keith Petruzzelli. Shots now 16 to 8 in favor of Newfoundland. On the draw, Darian Plouf for Newfoundland. Poke to the line, but held in. Now the Thunder on a five-on-four power play. Into the corner, Capcheck gives chase. Trying to free it up for John Stone in there. Big battle in the corner. Puck comes away loose behind the net. Darian Plouffe gives chase, but Peter MacArthur sends it down low. Melindy, he's pestering Rivera. Melindy, John Stone's got it pinned. Great defense there. Bodies all over the ice down there behind Petrozelli's cage. Darian Plouffe on ice check, and that's going to be rifled off the boards and booted to center by Peter MacArthur. Cap check on the four check. The D love getting involved here, folks. Already 45 seconds gone off the minor. I guess it's a, a new style of hockey, I think, here for these growlers. This penalty kill as in comes LaBerge on the right-hand side. Finds an open man in the slot, but MacArthur was forced to take that pass on his backhand and couldn't get a good shot off. Thompson at the line, through traffic, stopped by Petruzzelli. Loose in the corner, McCourt. He's fighting hard to try and free it up. The Crowlers come away empty-handed. LaBerge in on goal, and Petrozelli's got it. 
and all kinds of extracurricular. Petrozelli, he pieces out of there. As sticks and helmets and gloves are flying in a flurry. It's like when the Tasmanian devil kind of like goes <laughs> That's to war. That's exactly what it's it like. It just, everyone gets lost in this cloud of, of, in our case, buckets and gloves. And Riley McCourt's going to be escorted uh, to the penalty box for this. I don't think it really would have called something there. If anything, both are going, but a pressure send a message, I suppose, early in the second period. The message that fun hockey's not allowed anymore? I guess. Interesting uh, on the penalty kill there, though, for the Growlers. Puck down low and three Growlers in deep on it as well, only seeing one out. So not much of the box style that typically see in a penalty kill. Aggressive here for the Growlers, but working for the most part, the shots that Petrozelli is seeing, he is seeing. Exactly. Exactly. A little bit of discussion on where this face-off's going to take place. It should be in the growler zone in a penalty. But it's looking like it's going to be outside the growler zone on the side close to the penalty box. Of course, two growlers in the penalty box at this point, so we're going to see a five-on-three for 45 seconds. Face-off won by the Thunder, and they bring it in quickly. Down the left wing side is rising. Joe Masonis would have had time to keep that one in if he wasn't calling for a penalty. As Colin Long. Because two is not enough right now. Yeah, right. Left hand side, the Growlers trying to space themselves out accordingly. 22 seconds of five on three time. Up top and across for Long, top of the circle. Into the high slot of fake shot. Bad pass by Rizek. That one sent wide. Long. 10 seconds to go in the five on three. Rizek leaves it along the left hand. Face off, got Petrozelli makes the save. Knock the net off in the process. They'll blow the play dead with one second left on the Pomerlo minor. Well, that's both nets now that Keith Petrozelli has effectively knocked off its pegs. And I just think the pegs are probably a little different than the what we're maybe used to seeing in some of the, the bigger everyday professional rinks, perhaps. I was going to say, I think uh, one of the teams I coached was out here last week, and uh, those girls had no problem either putting the puck off to the puck the post off of their marks. Face off one back by Newfoundland, and a quick clear, Pomerlo. Well, he wasn't really going to get away with that, but hey, the Growlers back to five on four in the first one. Killed off. Payne across again as Adirondack works it into the offensive zone. Grasso behind the net. Melindy tried to poke it away. Comes held in by Thompson. Fakes the shot. Finds a little open room and skates to the left-hand side. Finding MacArthur. And a good active stick there. Sends the puck into the protective mesh. 49 seconds of power play time remaining for Adirondack. Growlers really eliminating a lot of opportunities here from the Thunder, really holding that triangle quite strong when it was the five on three, keeping pucks to the outside, making sure Petrozelli could see everything that was coming at him and tying up sticks in front. Pretty well textbook play there on that five on three. Irving couldn't win that face off and a quick one-timer rolling puck missed wide by LeBear. Skirving leaves it back for Pomerlo. Rolls away, 40 seconds to go in the man advantage. MacArthur, left-hand side, frees it up top for Thompson. Thompson, backpedal, leaves it for MacArthur. Through traffic, off a of body and wide. Loose on the right wing corner, battling for it to the line. Thompson holds and fires in the glove hand of Keith Petrozelli. Says, I don't think so, pal. 24 seconds left on the kill. 13.06 to go in the second frame. We're still tied at one. Carmelo giving uh, Petrozelli a bit of a tap on the back there for that one. I think everyone was happy to see that love come out in flash. The old leather lobster, as Brian Rogers would say. Looks an awful lot like uh, another former Quinnipiac goaltender in Michael Gartag, who had one heck of a glove hand. Another try, Masonis, that one block into the air. Now down in the left wing corner, Melindy to the line. It's held in 15 seconds to go on the penalty kill. Love. Walks all the way down into the right wing corner, shadowed by Darian Plouffe, comes back up top. Bouncing puck for Masonis, trying to keep away from Plouffe. Plouffe takes him out, Pomerlo gonna give a little extra business. And one second to go on the kill. Oh, someone got a late smack in there on Masonis. Growler's looking to keep everything outside once again. The court 
looks like he might be heading to the bench right out of the box here. But of course, if he has any opportunities, like Pomelo almost did when he came out, but bit too far out of his reach. We can see something similar develop here. Growlers out to be the Thunder right now, 17 to 12. The Thunder really closing that gap, of course, at the end of the first, it was 12 to seven in shot. So we saw it at one point there, I think it was 16 to 11. And the opportunities that the Thunder have seen on the power play have really contributed to that. A lot more opportunities in this period already than we saw in the first for the Thunder. Face off to the left of Petruzzelli, a clean win by the Growlers. They tried for that. Break to get Petrozelli. Sorry, to get Petrozelli was not coming out of the box, Chris. <laughs> that was uh, McCourt, of course. Clearing attempt is going to be held by Chukarov. He'll play it down right wing boards. Spinning it back down low is Smith. Loose behind the net, picked up by Kaplan. Trying to bully his way out in front. Puck's going to be taken by Pelton Bison. He'll look up Bice as the Growlers finally get to get back to the offense here. Retreating into neutral ice to avoid going offside is McCourt. McCourt. His shot wide of the cage. Pelton Bice along the right wing boards. Cross ice for Capcheck. Capcheck walks toward the line. Beautiful feed. Pelton Bice into the high slot. Had it knocked away. And here come the Thunder. A one on three rush for Kaplan. Kaplan tried to center into the glove of Petruzzelli. He'll play it ahead. And O'Brien quickly up for Pelton Bice. Trying to find Marcus Powers. Sneaking in. That's stolen away. Kaplan. Here come the Thunder down the left wing side. Pass stolen by a hustling Marcus Power. He's working hard here. In this second period, the Thunder centering try. Wrap around, stopped by Petrozelli. So a great five on three penalty kill, but now the Growlers still him inside their own zone as cap check. There's a shot wide of the cage from Adirondack. Bounced off the end boards, collected in. Garasso, he's bodied. Gordy Green joins the mix, cap check. Battling, can't yet come away with it. Centering try, it's there, and it's over the cage off a stick as the Thunder continue to press, looking for their first lead of the game. Comes to the line, held in. Cross ice feed, held by Mazza, snap down low. Cap check there to get it, has half a second to play. Turned it over, out of the corner, a try, Petrozelli. He's got it, but he was a little unsure of himself there with under 11 minutes to go in the period. Essentially a five on four there as Gordy Green lost his stick on the side, doing what he could, of course, without having to leave the D zone, but not ideal. Thunder really looking for some opportunities here, really putting it to the Growlers. The Growlers' speed has just kind of died off in this period for the most part. Yeah, well, a long time of killing that, those two penalties as well. That's certainly going to keep, uh, keep the feet still for a little while, but hey, still just over half a period to go. We're going to take a short break. You're listening to Newfoundland Crowlers Hockey on Mixler, on Rogers, and on Eastlick. Seems like everyone is counting steps these days. Some just count more than others. Here's the line crawlers on the Adirondack Thunder live from CBS Arena. I had never been to this facility before. My playing days ended before this place was <laughs> built, which tells you how long I've been out of my skates. This but. is a beautiful facility. They held the, the pine tees here for the curling right. as well. And it was, I think that was the first time I really saw the facility put on a larger scale. Yeah. And it was well done then. And tonight also very well done. Yeah, hats off yet again to the town of Conception Bay South and uh, the staff here at CBS Arena for everything that they've done to help get the Growlers up and going here for their home schedule. Inside the offensive zone, Pomerlo activates off the line, trying to get control, but the Thunder, they've been peskier this period, no doubt about it. They're going to turn that one over, though. Beautiful play. Johnson up ahead for Sintazzle. The pass too far in front of him, but he'll beat out the icing. Throws a check as well as it comes back to the line for Malindi. Winds and fires. It's into the shin pads of MacArthur. Good patience by the captain. And even better patience by our captain to free it back up and turn the Crowlers back in. Johnson's tripped, and that's a penalty. Touched up by Long, so the Growlers get another opportunity to get the proverbial monkey off their back here and try and 
get this power play going to where it ought to be. Well, like you mentioned, Chris, we're seeing the Growlers in the penalty box quite a bit there, so couldn't generate any opportunities for the most part. Couldn't really get the feet moving. It's only the last 30 seconds we began to see some play in the Thunder zone, I'd say, in the last six minutes yeah. of play. So another chance here for the Growlers to get things moving. We saw the last power play. They started to work things quite early on and generated opportunities. Pelton Bice wins the faceoff for Noel Hoffenmeyer. Here's McCourt. Thought he had a little room there. Hands it back for Hoffenmeyer instead. Across O'Brien. O'Brien. So creative with the puck. Finds some room. Out in front of rebound from McCourt. Oh, what a block in front. It's off a stick. And out of play is Riley McCourt's looking for his first pro goal. Great opportunity there. Great puck movement. O'Brien, like you mentioned, being so creative, really faking out the thunder there as he looked over his shoulders if he was going to pass it straight back to the D. And then, of course, cut left and went inside looking for that cross ice where Mitz just got his pad down in time. We got half a game gone. 9.51 remaining here in the second period of a 1-1 game. The Growlers on the power play for another buck and a half. Here's an opportunity. O'Brien feathered that one wide, held at the line. Hoffenmeyer back down low and around for O'Brien. Tried to center for Pelton Bice. That's intercepted and cleared away. All the way back in his own zone, staying on the ice is Hoffenmeyer. 1.20 to go on this man advantage. Marcus Power trying to... Keep the defense honest, here is the Growlers. That's McCourt forced to spin back. Carries it out himself. Cross ice speed for O'Brien, that one a little off the mark. Cleared in by Adirondack. Behind the net, Petrozelli ahead for McCourt. Leaves it back for O'Brien again as the fans here in Conception Bay South trying to will the Growlers to a power play goal. Here comes Riley McCourt, chipped it by and ahead for power, intercepted and cleared. Hoffenmeyer, 45 seconds to go. Ahead for power. That unit's been out there for the duration of this power play so far. There's McCourt, poked off his stick and back inside the Growler zone. Out to play it and leave it in his side is Petrozelli. Moved up. Pelton Bice, ahead for the pinching Hoffenmeyer. Hoffenmeyer hands for power. Back across that pass just off the mark. The Growlers hold it in temporarily. O'Brien couldn't find his man. And it's cleared away. 15 seconds to go on this power play. And not sure this one's going to be getting any monkeys off of any backs here, Kellyanne. I wouldn't say with five seconds left, of course, if we rush into the zone. Brennan Kapchak knocked to his backside. Puck knocked down away from Chizowski. Out of the box. They were back to five aside with eight minutes to go here. But Kapchak off the stick of Chizowski into the offensive zone. Loose puck Johnson. Able to advance it, temporarily held in by Green. Johnson, centering feed there, Chizowski battling, but Carrier gets it, he'll clear it away. Palmer Lowe, the lone growler goal scorer, head up as he finds Chizowski down the left wing. Cross ice, that pass blocked. Chizowski had it bounce off his glove, and the Thunder bring it up to center, Carrier. Knocked it off, now a two on one, long into the slot for a rip. That one over the cage, off the end boards. The Growlers might catch a break. Here's Darian Plouffe, a one on one. Plouffe tries a sharp angle try. It's off the stick of Thompson and out of play. Offensive zone draw coming up with 7.20 to go in the second. Darian Plouffe doing a really good job there, and that's the third time he's done that, where he kind of creeps defenseman on the Thunder, not quite seeing it as he's coming in close to the blue line, getting that puck up the side and really putting on the Jets. Not quite able to cut to the center of the ice there, but still able to get a shot off. Now getting off an offensive face-off, which of course is always crucial as Cliff will now take that face-off and cap check. One of our most offensive defensemen out there. We've said his name more than I think anybody's here tonight. He's got a hurry back as he puts one off the shin pads. Payne trying to get it away, and what a defensive effort there. I oh, and they're going to call a penalty there. But he didn't fall. But he didn't get tripped up but it's a tripping call. And they're calling Melindy for the trip. I think Melindy's even from, no, not Melindy. No one knows who's getting the call. Well, number 43 is up on the board there. Melindy doesn't seem to mind. Doesn't seem to think it's him because I, it definitely wasn't because Melindy from wasn't, what I could see. It, Wow. 
so confused, but I think we're all confused by that. But anyways, Growler's going to their fourth penalty kill of this period. Third, That's right. Fourth? I think it is the fourth. Face off to the left of Petruzzelli. He's been the best penalty killer. As that one is, watch, watch out into the crowd. Someone put their hand on that to try to catch it and just couldn't close their mitt on it. Looks like everyone in the stands is just happy to get a puck there for that one. 7.05 to go here. Melindy in the box for something. They're calling tripping, but no one fell. To the left of Petruzzelli we go. Bloof and long on the draw. Loose into the corner, located by Hoffenmeyer, puts it off the backside, and they're gonna call Hoffenmeyer for another penalty. Physicality is illegal here at CBS Arena tonight. Growlers now having to go to their second five on three of the second period of the game, but all in this period alone. All in the last 12 minutes and 59 seconds. But killing off all the penalties to this, to this point, doing a good job of it. It's a shot the arm to the Growlers, and it's got to be frustrating for the Thunder, especially if the Growlers can keep this a tie game at this stage of the game and eventually get the makeup calls that will most surely become because that's how refereeing is done. You would think. Here comes a shorthanded opportunity. Darian Ploof in all alone. He scores! A five-on-three shorthanded goal for Darian Ploof. 2-1 Growlers. The shorthanded kids just keep on coming. What a goal by Plouffe. Unbelievable. The amount of shorthanded goals that this team is able to create through. That's their fifth already in five games. Unbelievable effort here. But let's not lose sight here of the minute and 41 seconds of five on three time that remains. Don't get your actions or your emotions too high. You still have to batten down the hatches. That's here. the thing. You score a goal, but you don't get a player back. <laughs> that, I wish it were, what's that, dodgeball <laughs> rules? You know what I mean? You catch the ball and get one of your teammates back. It should be like that. But Darian Plouffe's first of the year is a big one. Still, the Thunder have control now in the offensive zone, leaving it in the right wing corner. What a block there, cap check. Surprised I didn't call that a trip. <laughs> up top for Thompson, across. One-timer blocked by Pomerlo. Up top, Thompson gets it back. 105 to go on the James Melindy minor. 115 to go on the Noel Hoffenmeyer minor. Tough to say. Behind the net, the Thunder set up shop. Keeping an eye is Pomerlo. Up top again for Thompson. Six minutes to go here in the second period. Up top, that one fluttered away again. The net's knocked off. The ref waited quite a while to blow that one down considering the net is pretty well sideways there. But the Growlers looking like they've got a jump in their step now. Got a bit of pep there. Let's see if trying we can find the assists on the Darian Ploof marker. Trying to carry some momentum on that shorthanded Golder. Growlers leading 2-1 to one with 5.56 left to go in the period. They're still down two men, though. Five on three for at least another 45 seconds till Melindy comes out for the tripping call that even he didn't May think he have had. happened. He went to the bench. <laughs> but also, I mean, that could be a little bit of gamesmanship on James's part as well. He's known to be a little sneaky like that. No disrespect to James. That's in no way what I mean. I don't think he would take it that way. No, I think you're right. Face off to the right of Petruzzelli. He's made 14 saves so far here tonight. Face off one back right to Petruzzelli. He'll leave it behind the net. Johnstone, Johnny on the spot. He'll clear the zone. Much to the delight of the fans here. What an interesting period it's been here in Conception Bay South. And folks, don't forget, we're back here tomorrow. We're back here on Sunday afternoon, so set your clocks now. Face off, not face off, pa pass comes up. Rising down low. Up top for Long again. 18 seconds to go in the five on three. Long up top, his shot off the outside of the net. He'll get it right back, rolls toward the line, but he'll hold it in. McCourt keeps an eye. As the puck comes up top, five seconds left on the man advantage. A one-timer side door, the net knocked off again. This one, it's Melindy out of the box. He's not gonna have the wheels to catch up to that one, but only five seconds to go. Look at Smith, how frustrated he is. He couldn't 
get a pass there. Another fantastic kill for your Crawlers. We're back to five aside with a 2-1 lead with under five minutes to play in the period. Growlers continue to be Hoffenmeyer, now. now that was a penalty that goes uncalled with 4.51 to play. Opposite day here in CBS with 4.51 left in the period. Growlers, like we mentioned, really picking up some momentum there and the crowd really feeding into that. We're seeing everybody get into it here. The Growlers trying to... There are things in this world we cannot explain. Mysteries above and below. Forces that pull us together and draw us in. To bear witness as the natural world goes quietly into the night. Here, in our own backyard. So this period, that means the shots are 8-6 in favor of Adirondack. Adirondack now 0 for 5 on the man advantage and have allowed a 3 on 5 short handed goal again. It's uh, the Growlers, they just, the penalty kill is almost where they accelerate at this point. The penalty kill is over 98% for sure now, or 95%. It's, it's higher than that based on this game alone. Uh, their power play, however, though, is only 5.6%. Yeah, that uh, hasn't yet added up. But again, we're still only five games, or four and a half games, I suppose, into a 72-game season. Law of averages says that is going to even itself out, as will probably this out-of-this-world penalty kill, let's be honest. Oh, absolutely. And these two teams, like you mentioned, Chris, they're going to meet again tomorrow night. They're going to meet again Sunday night. They've already met once this season. They meet a total of 15 yeah. times this season. So... We're going to see a lot play over this entire season. You're darn right. A lot of hatred still left in this rivalry. As that's played away by Petrozelli, fanning on that there. And now the Growlers out of their own zone. Hoffenmeyer up for O'Brien on the right wing side. Has all kinds of options trying to get around Leidsman. He's bodied there, left the puck. Gordy Green, nice puck protection there. To the line, held by Melindy, played right back to O'Brien. Oh, what a move by O'Brien to free it up. Back down low to Gordy Green. Green. He'll cycle it up top high slot. O'Brien's drive, that one off a stick. Hoffenmeyer looking for a quick one, that one wide as well. O'Brien, 4.13 to go for Gordy Green. Green slings away from that one. All the way up top, kicks his opposition stick out of his hands. But Carrier comes back. That pass hopped over the stick of Smith. He'll chase it down, bodied hard by Pomerlo. Bodies collide in the right wing corner inside the Newfoundland zone, Kaplan. Had his pocket picked in the super noob, skated away. Up top for Green, over the line on side, dropped off for O'Brien, weaves his way, power, he stick checked a penalty coming up to the Thunder, a power play to Newfoundland with 3.42 remaining. They called it a hook. So the Growlers get a chance to get that power play goal they're so desperately seeking here tonight. A lot of great connections happening there at the end of that play there, of course, between Marcus Power and Zach O'Brien. But Kapchak also coming in low. We've seen him being a very offensive defenseman. I can't say it enough throughout this game because he essentially is the fourth forward any time he's out there. He's got the hustle to get back, but no need there when he's coming down. Marcus Power, of course, and Zach O'Brien. Pretty well playing tic-tac-toe. Kapchak gets it for Sentazo. Now down low into the corner for Chizowski. Backhand pass, back up top, cap check. Nifty play for Chizowski. And down loan again to Sentazo. Behind the net, out the other side, it comes back for Ryan Chizowski. The WHL grad unable to hold the line, it comes back for Brennan, cap check, 25 seconds gone. Coming up at our second intermission, stick around, uh-oh, a turnover, a huge block, caught in the skates and fired wide, great block by cap check. Still loose in the Newfoundland zone, having to work for it. It comes away, Chizowski can't get to it first. That shot up high. Cap check falls in the corner, and the Growlers can't get it out. A partial on man rush, great poke check by Pelton Bice, and another power play coming up for Newfoundland. They're going to get their own five on three here. Look at LaBerge out here. He's just throwing his body around. Pelton Bice skates it away. Growlers with a six man out there now. Managed to get it in deep, forcing the Thunder to touch it up. And they will. So the Growlers with 2.28 to go in the period. 
will have a 46 second five on three advantage. Growlers there at the end of that there, however, looking like they were on the penalty kill. A lot of play down of their zone. This while the is, puck was staying on the outside. Just This has been one of the strangest periods of hockey I've seen in a long time. Granted, I haven't seen a lot of hockey <laughs> in, a, in, in a long time, uh, but nonetheless, very strange period. But hey, a 2-1 lead for Newfoundland and now a 5-on-3. Ironically enough, the Growlers had a, their first 5-on-3 goal of the season in Adirondack. Noel Hoffenmeyer with that goal. So maybe this is uh, an omen as the Growlers lose the draw. Chukarov, he'll hit center and roll it in. Pardon me. It's Todd Skirving we're going to hear from in our second intermission on Mixler, by the way. The adopted new. That's right. Across to o, uh, Power, McCourt. Hands off as the Growlers, five on three, gets set up. McCourt leaves it in the corner. The, the crowd trying to buoy. There's the giant scores! What a rocket by Noel Hoffenmeyer! A five on three goal! Three, one, Newfoundland! What a shot by Noel Hoffenmeyer! Wasted no time getting that puck off his stick over the club of Mittens and into the back of the cage. What a goal, his second of the year, his second five on three goal of the year. The cherry on top, the Growlers still on the power play here. They got another minute 27. Looks like they finally got the monkey off the back, but can they do it five on four? <laughs> That's the million dollar question as it's cleared away by Adirondack. Well, folks, you're definitely going to want to stick around on the second intermission just for the inter for the second period recap. <laughs> There'll be a lot to talk about. Here's O'Brien. Cleared away by Adirondack. Hoffenmeyer, second of the year. From Zach O'Brien and Riley McCourt. A buck 25 to go in the second. 19-15 the shots for Newfoundland as McCourt skates it away. Head of steam. Hands off to Power, he'll work it down low. Behind the net, it rolls. Kelton Weiss gives chase, knocked away from him. O'Brien, he's tied up as well, lifted to the line. Beautiful play held in by Hoffenmeyer. Rolling puck, 40 seconds to go on the man advantage. Hoffenmeyer calls for it and gets it. Finds O'Brien, one-timer, that one. Rolled up and off the stick. One minute to go here in 30 seconds. Left on this power play, Kaplan carried it in. Cross ice feed, spinning around with that one is Thompson. He's going to retreat back into neutral ice. Putting it right back into the offensive zone. 40 seconds left in the period. 10 seconds left on this power play for Newfoundland. Grasso on his feet in the penalty box, waiting to emerge. 30 seconds left in the frame. Just now, McCourt lets Grasso escape. And now what a feed for Johnson. Into the offensive zone, a one-on-four rush. Leaves it for Skirving. Skirving delivers it on goal. Stop. Trying to get it back. It's loose behind the net. 15 seconds to go in the second period. Out in front, a good-looking pass. Nobody home. Now a three-on-two back for the Thunder. Over the line, onside apparently, as it's in off the end boards. One second to go. And the Growlers with two goals, a five-on-three goal, and a three-on-five goal to take a two-goal lead after 40 minutes. After spending, I don't even want to count the minutes in the penalty box because I, there was multiple five-on-threes for the Thunder. Silly period, but we'll catch you up on all the details. We're going to take a short break. You're listening and watching Newfoundland Growlers Hockey on Rogers Television, on Mixler, and on Flow Sports. Don't go anywhere. Your second intermission is coming. Well, what a second period that was. Started out slow, a little slow, but around the, uh, with seven minutes left, uh, things just picked up, and we saw things that we have not seen in a long time. Two five-on-threes that period. The Growlers had to fight off two separate five-on-threes that period. But, Bill, I was almost worried for a second there that I jinxed the team coming out of the gates because I did say <laughs> we need a fast start from this right. Newfoundland Growlers team in the second period. And it was the Adirondack Thunder who scored just 40 seconds in. All right, let's check out some highlights of what we missed in the second period if you're just joining us. And let's start with that Adirondack goal very early in this second period. You can see there, a tough turnover there from the Growlers, and they're able to quickly bury on that opportunity. But 
Phil, the first minute after getting scored on is always crucial in how you respond. And the Growlers were able to respond very well coming off that goal. They go into a five on three. They're able to kill that off. A really good, solid looking penalty kill here tonight. It's easy to point the finger and say maybe the Adirondack power play is not really clicking, but the Newfoundland Growlers penalty kill certainly is clicking here tonight. Then we go to a second five on three, and we see this beautiful goal from Darian yeah, Plouffe wow. off a what, you know, a great shot to bury that one, hit that top left corner. But the pass from Tristan Pomerlo leading into that was a thing of beauty, Bill. That goal there on a second five on three of the period, then you just felt the energy pick up in this place. You could feel it from down here, yeah. and the Growlers didn't look back. Cannot remember the last time on any professional level that I've seen a five on three shorthanded goal, but uh, it was a beauty for sure. And of course, the Newfoundland Growlers go ahead and made it 3-1. And as you'll see here on this power play, the Growlers really starting to find that puck movement and then just an absolute cannon of a one-timer on that power play. And that was Noel Hoffenmeyer. Noel Hoffenmeyer on the power play there. That's his second goal of the year. He's got two assists now, four points in five games. He's off to a red hot start for this Growlers team. But the way they were able to respond yes. really said a lot in that power play. We saw it click a lot in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. Then it looked a little disconnected after that. Mm -hmm. But that one was what they really needed to get that power play goal. And yeah. to get it in that fashion yeah. puts the Growlers in a great position heading into this third well, I'll period. I'll tell you, that, that five on three shorthanded goal, if there were any butts glued to the seats here at the CBS Arena, <laughs> they were unglued rather quickly. That really brought them up. Very much so. I mean, there's nothing better than a shorthanded goal. No. When you make it a five on three shorthanded goal, yes. It doesn't get much better than that, and a beautiful goal at that. Well, you know, we've been hearing a lot about the speed of this Newfoundland Growlers team, and of course, you're not scoring on a five-on-three shorthanded situation unless you have the speed. Which is exactly what we saw there again, Bill. I mean, the quick yep. feet moving out of the zone, heads up play, nice stretch pass, feet are already moving at the blue line, he's gone. Darian Plouffe makes no mistake on that breakaway. I mean. Again, like you said, it was a slow start to the period, but it seemed like the Growlers really found their legs. It was a bit chippy yeah. there as well. We saw some frustration yeah. starting oh, to boil yeah. over, and the best part about that is it's only Friday night. We still have two more wow. games between these two teams, so I would imagine we'll see those frustrations pick yeah. up a little bit more throughout yeah, okay. the weekend. I think uh, whoever's taking uh, notes of all the penalties is going to have a little bit of a uh, carpal tunnel syndrome before this weekend is over. So if you're just joining us, here's what we know. The Newfoundland Growlers are up 3-1 to one. Uh, over the Adirondack Thunder. This is the second intermission. We'll take a little break, and we'll be back momentarily here on Rogers TV. Are you looking for that kind of help? It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. I'm Darren Hand. Please join me for Pocket Universe. On this show, we'll showcase artists, cosplayers, gamers, and discuss all topics of sci-fi, horror, and fantasy in Newfoundland and Labrador. This place is teeming with creative people who love to talk about their passion. That's Pocket Universe, Wednesdays, 8.30 p.m., only on Rogers TV. Welcome back to the second intermission here at CBS Arena. This is the home of the Newfoundland Growlers home opener. We've all read the headlines, we've heard the stories. I'm with CBS Bear Darren Bent, and you know, it goes without saying, uh, thank you for stepping up and providing the fans with an opportunity to see their homegrown team in this province instead of Ontario. Yeah, it's fantastic to have them here at Conception Bay South. And you know, they are the Newfoundland Growlers, so this is a home home game for them. Yep. Some people are calling it a home away game, but you know, yep. uh, but you know, uh, this came about uh, last Wednesday. Uh, a lot of our residents said, well, you know, look, the Growlers, they may be in play. Maybe we could have a vote in our arena. And uh, we said, well, let's make a call. So we made a call, but they were going to Ontario. And uh, we said, okay. And then a week ago today, 
uh, we get a phone call around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and things had changed, and they were wondering if we could accommodate them. Yeah. And so we said, give us a few hours, and we'll see what we can do. And we work with our staff. Uh, we got a hold of our user groups. Um, and we came together really quickly. So by 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, the growlers were sending out a release saying, we're staying home, wow. and we're going to be in CBS. And we couldn't be happier to happen. So how much uh, work did you have to do to uh, make the CBS arena uh, available and game worthy? Did you have to do a lot around here to fix her up? Well, you know, the first thing we had to deal with our user groups, our minor hockey, our skating club, our senior blues, our junior renegades. You know, we had to make sure that we could accommodate them somehow and that they would be taken care of. And that took a little bit of work because a rink time around here is not that easy to get. But, right. you know, the Growlers have helped us with that as well. And, uh, you know, but the staff here at CBS, you know, our recreation staff are incredible. And, you know, in, in six days, they have transformed, you know, a regular uh, community arena into a venue for professional hockey. Right. They work very closely with the Growlers organization. Yeah. And, you know, the, the staff here have really come together to make this work. Well, it's so impressive just how quickly, again, you know, it, it's a great story. It's a great, it's amazing how an idea came to fruition. And as Glenn Stamper said, like in 12 hours, 12 hours, yeah, 12 hours time, it's all it took. It's all it took. You know, we uh, got the call last Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, it, it, for us in, in the CBS, you know, we're really proud of our community. We're really proud of our arena, uh, the facilities, the amenities here. And, you know, and uh, we are working really hard in this community uh, for resident attraction, for business attraction. Yeah. And we saw this as a fantastic opportunity right. to showcase our town, to showcase this great arena. You know, watching the game here tonight, you yeah. know, it's fantastic. And, right. and the atmosphere, when you fill this place up, yeah. you can't beat it anywhere. This place is sideways right now. Yeah. Uh, they're winning the game. How yeah. much better does it get than that? Well, listen, when you score a five-on-three shorthanded goal, I mean, I'm... I'm telling you, there's people that are just rising from the dead with excitement when, when that happens. Yeah, no, it, it's incredible. And, you know, and a big win for us. And I, we've had so many people in our business community reach out to us since this idea came yeah. forward. You know, they want to see how the, they can take advantage of this and help their business. And, of course, look, coming out of this big COVID thing, yeah. all of that matters. You it know? does. It really does. A uh, restaurant across the street has been sideways, I guess, for the last yeah. few hours and uh, down in our town. And, look, over the next uh, two weekends, we can't wait to see all the people come out here and enjoy the town of CBS. So what other events do you think could be uh, possibly coming to the CBS Arena in the future? What are you looking at? I'm thinking uh, this is a great place for a curling event even. Well, you know, we've had the Pinney's Grand Slam That's right. here twice. You, you, and you I've know, been and, here for that, and yeah. it was wild. Yes, it was. And, and they, and, you know, top notch, uh, you know, they did everything like you would basically see anywhere else, you know. And, uh, and we have staff here now. That, that could turn this place around in six days wow. into professional hockey. So, you know, if something comes along that we're needed, we have the expertise here now, this town is ready to go with whatever can come along. And look, we're going to be looking for stuff. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of hockey here. We've got skating here all the time, and it's fantastic. We host tournaments, we host uh, skating competitions, yeah. and we host trade shows and so forth. But we're really saying to everybody in this province and anybody else, look, we have an arena here. We have the expertise. Let's get going. Yeah. And I'll say, look, if you're a business out there and you're not looking at expanding to CBS, I'm saying, what are you waiting for? we got <laughs> 27,000 people in this town, and they're looking for things to spend money on. So come on out to CBS. Here we are. I love this. You cannot get a better spokesperson for this town than its mayor. Well, listen, uh, Darren Bent, thank you so much for uh, coming here, and thank you again. On behalf of the Newfoundland Growler fans, you know, it, uh, I mean, we understand. It's not just words. It's a lot of work that you guys did for this to happen. And, uh, you know, for the first six games, we are going to have a whole lot of fun here at the home of the Newfoundland Growlers, albeit temporarily, the CBS Arena. Yeah, well, it's great to have Rogers TV here, too, doing the yeah. games. And it's fantastic to have the Growlers here. They've been top-notch to deal with. It's, it's just been a wonderful experience. I talked to some of our community service groups that are working tickets and so forth. They're having a great time. It's yes. wonderful. Well, listen, we'll get you back to your seat so you can shoot your Growlers on. You're not just the mayor. You're a hockey fan as well. And I have a new jersey tonight. I saw that. And you look pretty <laughs> damn good in it, too. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. We're going to throw it back for a little break. And we'll be back as the second intermission continues on Rogers TV. Started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. Jane's and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was going to stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just 
the beginning, a chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnosothy.ca. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. We're here at The Rooms, finishing our second season of Sharing Our Cultures. This is the place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to our communities. Join us for Sharing Our Cultures on Rogers TV, Channel 9. Welcome back to the second intermission. Bill Hart here with Ben Murphy. I want to thank you, Ben Murphy, uh, for filling in for Randy Piercy, who's not here tonight. He is recovering from surgery, and uh, he is resting comfortably. He wishes he can be here. He'd like to express his uh, thanks to the fans for and thanks to the Growlers for coming back because he is just as hockey mad as the next one. I can only imagine he <laughs> must just be at the edge of his seat wanting to be here. Listen, tonight. he's probably screaming at the TV. He probably had <laughs> broken his TV. He probably threw a lamp at it or, or something along those lines. But Ben Murphy is going to be a voice that you are going to hear a lot, Growlers fans. Uh, over the summer, of course, announced as one of the newest members of the Growlers broadcasting crew. You, along with Kellyanne Roberts, who's broadcasting tonight. Yes, she And is. this is actually a very historic event. It is the first female color commentator broadcaster in ECHL history. Man, and this league's been around since, what, the early 80s? So, Quite a while now. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. It's uh, almost surprising that this has never happened before. It is, in yeah. a lot of ways, especially as you see, you know, more and more women involved in the game at every single level. Yes. Uh, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. That's right. And it is great yep. to see uh, Kellyanne Roberts, a tremendous hockey mind, a tremendous broadcaster, and mm. it's so great to see her making history here tonight. Yep. And I'm not surprised to see Kellyanne Roberts making history. <laughs> she is just a tremendous talent, and I, uh, I can't wait to work alongside of her yeah. and Chris Ballard yes. all season long. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, it's a great broadcasting crew there. Uh, Chris uh, really wears his heart out on his sleeve yes, when yes. he's calling the games. Uh, you you can tell when he's excited, Passionate. he's excited. Passionate. And when he's disappointed, <laughs> man, oh, man, it's uh, always a whole lot of fun. All right, so as we've just heard, we're talking to uh, CBS Bear Darren Bent. Uh, the Newfoundland Growler is going to be calling CBS home for uh, the next six games uh, anyway. But uh, you, can't, you can't help but feel happy that the, the Growlers are here and not Ontario. Not Ontario. Absolutely. There Nothing was... against Ontario, of course. <laughs> there was a while where we thought these first six games would be played out of the Coca-Cola Coliseum in yep. Toronto where the Marlies play. Right. Uh, you know, you really did see the Toronto Maple Leafs organization really jump in there mm -hmm. very quickly to say right. we need to find these guys a home they need to be playing you know and it really throws a wrench in not just the growler schedule but yeah. the entire echl oh, schedule yes. you know these teams are on travel schedules they know they're going yep. from city to city to city and then hopefully back home yes but you know and there's hotels booked mm -hmm. there's restaurants booked That's right so it really does throw a bigger wrench into things than just for one team you know it really does throw a wrench in to the whole league schedule so the fact that they were able to transition so quickly and make the move to Toronto and yeah. then transition again so quickly to set everything back up here in the beautiful new CBS arena yeah. yes. and again a great electric crowd here tonight you can just get that sense of how yeah. excited everyone is That's to be right. back here and you know even if things didn't go the Growlers way tonight I think you'd still see a lot of happy fans oh, in yes. these seats luckily the Growlers do have a three to one lead going into this third they period do. They do. they're going to hope to keep the pedal down and hopefully try to find a couple more insurance goals <laughs> just nice. to keep things safe and yeah. keep fans extra happy. Well, a funny story, of course, this past week, this past Thursday, the Adirondack Thunder announced on Facebook that they have arrived in Newfoundland. And wouldn't you know it, the day they arrived, November, mind you, it was sunny and 11 degrees. So I'm wondering how many of these players thought, wow, <laughs> this place is better than Florida. <laughs> And now tonight, we have snow on the way. That is right. So, you know, for a while anyway, some of these players who have never set foot in this province thought this, now, where are the palm trees in this province? And another funny story about this Adirondack team. They showed up here today, and I think within maybe 10, 15 minutes into practice, 
one of the panes of glass down at the far end was smashed in no. practice. I think it was just a puck. <laughs> Unlucky. We've seen it happen before. Sure. But we had needed the cleanup at the CBS Arena a little earlier today as we had a completely smashed made of glass in practice. So they're making their mark here in CBS. They're Listen, making their mark. I'll tell you, if the CBS Arena can get this place hockey ready for the Newfoundland Growlers in less than 12 hours, surely they can clean up a pane of smashed glass before you can even blink, before you can even snap your fingers. And Bill, another note here as well about the work that it took to make these games happen. We talk about the ECHL schedule, but there's junior B games here locally. Like, there's senior hockey games here locally. All this stuff had to be rescheduled. Birthday parties here at the arena. Yeah. They really had to find a lot of creative solutions, they and they had to find them fast. It yeah. really was, you know, a complete team effort, a community effort from all hands involved. All right. All right, let's quick look at the scoreboard of our other teams in the North Division. Uh, Reading's in trois air tonight. They are just getting underway, and the same for the Maine Mariners, who are home to the Florida Everblades tonight, and we'll have a chance to see a lot of those teams in the weeks and months ahead during this beginning of the ECHL season. All right, the Growlers are 4-0 to start on the road. Their home openers tonight. They are up 3-1 as we prepare now for the start of the third period. And as you can look around, the crowd's into it. I saw a saxophone player in the stands there just a little while ago. So now that you've seen everything, well, you hold on to your hats because I never thought I was going to see a five-on-three shorthanded goal. <laughs> and we've seen now three separate five-on-threes in this game. We'll see yes. if the refs make uh, such an impact right. in this third period as they have in the first two. And another quick note, too, you may have noticed on Facebook, uh, the Newfoundland Growlers announced that for the games tomorrow and Sunday, any leftover tickets will be available to the public uh, before game time. Go to the Newfoundland Growlers Facebook page, and you can find out all the details on that. So they're doing everything in their power to make sure that as many fans as possible can get their butts into the seats and cheer their Newfoundland Growlers on. Same time tomorrow night, 7 p.m. here at the CBS Arena. We're going into a big third period here, Bill. The crowd's going to be into it. Both teams are going to be ready to go here. Adirondack's not going to go away easy. Right. This team, they've been in this situation before. They are not going to go away easy. The Growlers really need to take care of their own zone. But again, it comes back to speed and the cycle game. All Those right. are the keys to success in this third period. Let's throw it back now to Chris Ballard and Kelly Ann Roberts with a call on Rogers TV. <laughs> have to go as high into that high slot because that's where Zach O'Brien's hanging out, so no need to clutter it at this point. Already ready to go here for the third period. Johnson, Green, Sintazzo, Kapchak, and Hoffenmeyer. Also worth noting, we have not seen the return of Matt Hellickson. As we're back underway here. Pulled away, the Growlers get control. Here's Hoffenmeyer in his own zone. One thing I'd rather not see in this period is the Growlers sit back on their heels a little bit, and now they have an odd man rush to start the period. Oh, and Isaac Johnson couldn't quite get a stick on that one. Comes back up. Hoffenmeyer redirected, and away come the Thunder back the other way. Right wing side, good active stick there by Johnson to knock that one out of harm's way. Loose in the corner, stolen back by Newfoundland. Cap check, peels away from a check, flings it ahead. The Growlers green. Up for Sintazzo, he'll break it away with Johnson. Johnson hits center and dumps it in. Left wing corner, Sintazzo gives chase. Softly played away by Adirondack. Up towards center, that one. Escapes the length of the ice, Melindy lets it go. He wants to hit him, I think. Laid off him at the last second, Carrier gets it along the right wing boards and a fighting shot through is blocked. One minute gone here in the third period. No shots on goal so far here in the frame as Melindy settles it ahead. Melindy through the middle and up for Pelton Bison across Marcus Power. Somehow still looking for his first goal of the season. Meanwhile, back come the Thunder. At center, LaBerge weaves his way through neutral likes in the offensive zone. Poke check by O'Brien. O'Brien's got him tied up. He and Marcus Power. O'Brien frees it to the line and out. Melindy jumps in. Trying to get away on a rush there, but now he'll have to get back in his own end. Carrier knifes that one in deep. Brennan Kapchek poked it away from Peter MacArthur. Melindy gives it back to him behind the cage. Behind the net. Oh, that one turned over. Out in front and a point blank save by Petrozelli. Sneaking away from his man as Pelton bites. It'll be knocked to center for Zach O'Brien. Also worth noting here, uh, tonight the Growlers are sporting, uh, new to this month obviously, a puppy sticker on the back of their helmet. Worth noticing because they did not wear it clearly. 
in the month of October. And on the back uh, of their helmets and on our own uh, lapels here this evening, everyone sporting a poppy. Love to see it. Behind Keith Petruzzelli, 17.45 to go. A great battle there. And it's Skirving who comes away with the puck. Tried to play it away. A lost stick down there and Adirondack recovers. McCourt pins his man. Skirving does the same. The puck's picked up by Kapchek. His pass stolen. Skirving luckily able to knock that away into the corner. He'll get it back off the stick of Kapchek. Played ahead. John Stone through him. Prowlers. Skirving gets it on a broken play and leaves it in his own zone again. McCourt across for Kapchek. Right back to McCourt as the Growlers are content to waste a couple seconds off the clock here. It's into the offensive zone, but not for long. Quickly turned back in by the Adirondack Thunder. Payne weaves his way in and right into the midsection of Petrozelli. No rebound. The first shot of the period for Adirondack. Not much of a test for old KP, the rating. Goaltender up the Of course. You can see that one, of course, and that's just yeah. attributed to the play that the Growlers are playing now. We're seeing them with the puck a lot more than we did at the beginning of the second period. A lot more speed, hungrier when they came out. They weren't sitting back on their heels as we continue to see a more offensive game from the Growlers, especially from their defensemen, like you mentioned. Melindy looking to go for it a few times. I love James's game tonight. He's activated in all areas of the puck, and he's not playing silly hockey. He's not playing you know, a game that a lot of fans would love for James to play, if, <laughs> I, I, if that's me being diplomatic about it. Uh, but he, he's got, he has matured into a wonderful leader on this hockey club throughout the championship season, and obviously all the way through to today. That his learning of the game has never stopped. 16 and a half minutes to go. Here in the third period, the Growlers happy to play catch inside their own zone, and here comes Gordy Green. Weaves his way by himself. Offside as Oren Santazzo snuck into the left wing. He thought he was going for it and then just couldn't wait that much longer. Like you mentioned, James, of course, changing a few words here now, Melindy, but his play has matured. We've seen that, you know, he's not looking to get in everybody's face despite what's happening in place right now. We've seen his game mature itself as well. He's not rushing with the puck, he's waiting. There's no panic. And I think the other players are feeding off of that as well because everyone is settled for the most part. Passes are crisp, nothing is rushed, and they're waiting for the open man. And see, so many people will look at, uh, say, the stat line of James Melindy and write him off as a goon or as a one-dimensional player. But man, there's a reason that he is the captain of the Newfoundland Growlers, and it, and it is not Newfoundland tokenism. It, it, he fully deserves the C for the way that he leads by example. And there's the captain leading by example with a beautiful little head fake to free it up. Pelton Bice, he was stick checked, but now Melindy carries it back in, tries to activate and turns it over. A possible odd man rush back, but Melindy hustles back. Still an open man in front there, but Pelton Bice steady in his own zone. Puck does come away, trying to lift it away was McCourt, but it ends up being played back toward the Newfoundland netminder Petrozelli, and he will hang on. Like the puck got a little stuck there, probably still a bit wet for the most part, but seen it roughed up a bit more in the growler zone than the Thunders at this point, but only early in this period. Shots 20 to 19 in favor of the Growlers as they lead this game 3 to 1. Chris Ballard and Kellyanne Roberts on the call here at tonight's contest. Thank you all again so much for joining us. If you're on the Mixler chat, let us know where you're tuned in from. I always love that. Growlers trying to get it out of their own zone. Johnson gave his man a whack, so did Capcheck down there. And Pomerlo, who's got a multi-point game here tonight, helps free it up, and now it's a two-on-one for Newfoundland. There's a drive by McCourt, just wide of the cage, off the end boards, and Capcheck already the first man back to retrieve it in his own zone, weaving his way. Puck left behind, collected by Adirondack, tops it, fired it wide. Irving, a good stiff poke check there, and Chizowski spins it ahead with a backhand. It missed Isaac Johnson. Both teams initiate a line change. Over five minutes gone here. In the offensive zone come the Thunder, but Gordy Green may not be very tall, but he plays a big game and managed to outmuscle his man there, and away comes Hoffenmeyer into the offensive zone, a pass off a shin pad. Blue toward the cage. Oh, and bodies colliding all over the place there as 
Johnson has to dust himself off as Riley McCourt glides backwards into his own zone with the puck. Gordy Green cuts out with some speed as the Growlers slowly make their way to center and send that one in off a of body. Cleared back to center. Now a rush back for the Thunder. There's a drive shot by Petrozelli off the end boards. That'll be moved up quickly here for Newfoundland. That pass off of Gordy Green and in deep. No, they're going to call it an icing with 14.02 running. Hoffmeyer doing a great job at grabbing that rebound there with a quick shot that the Thunder just had in the offensive zone for themselves. Petrozelli, of course, kicking that one out. Give a shout out to a few people who replied on the Mixler chat. We got someone tuned in from Cincinnati, Ohio, Freeport, Illinois, and Whitless Bay. All of the, the typical growler hotspot. <laughs> We're big in Freeport, Illinois. Jokes aside, folks, thank you all so much for joining us. And even if you're watching along at home on Flow or on Rogers, wherever you may be tuned in, download Mixler. Join in on the chat. It's a good bit of fun. Into neutral ice. John Stone trying to get control of that puck. Every year the hockey gods throw me something that's going to trip me up throughout a year. Last year it was two players with the last name Bradley and this year it's Garrett Johnston, Isaac Johnson and Mark Johnstone. At least they're all different. Here's O'Brien that one off a stick and wide. O'Brien is due for like a giant game at some point. He has been too good as he's knocked to the ice on that play. He'll pop right back up with the Thunder. They're not able to get it out. Not yet, anyway. Good hustle along the boards by Marcus Power. He can only hold the line so long. The Growlers do get it back. Kapchak got to watch the guy behind you, Cappy. Nice move there to peel away. Back in his own zone already, Kelly Animal. Seven minutes gone. Kapchak doing a great job at drawing players into him to open up the ice a bit more. And then he's seeing his defense can drop back just a little bit for that quick pass to make that breakout happen more smoothly than we had been seeing, but doing a great job at drawing players in. on the power play not long ago we saw them with the five on three really take advantage of that but we haven't seen much when it comes to the five on four we haven't seen the full i think capabilities that could happen from the growlers on those chances and so when it comes to the five on four expecting like we've seen it build throughout this entire game that quicker puck movement we're seeing more shots from just inside the blue trying to generate some rebounds out front which of course is what we saw happen with two goals already this game i believe i mean Darren Plouffe, however, was quite clear, but Hoffenmeyer's was because there was so much traffic in front, and then that rocket was just going straight through, but again, happening from just inside the blue, so expecting to see more of that, generating the puck down to the sides. We have seen a lot of the high slot play, but of course, that comes from the quarterbacking and moving that puck smoothly around on power play. All 40 to go here in the third period. 3-1 is the score. Speaking of 3-1, our cousins in the Deacon family, the Iowa Heartlanders, lead their game 3-1 over the Indy Fuel, looking for their second victory of the season. Elsewhere in our division, the Redding Royals lead our other cousins, the trois Riviere Lions, 1-0 with five minutes to go in the first. The Florida Everblades lead the Maine Mariners, 1-0. Jacksonville and Atlanta, no score. Norfolk, they've been a surprise this season, 4-2, and, and they're leading 1-0 over the Orlando Solar Bears. And all of the rest of the games have yet to begin. Here's a quick little out-of-town scoreboard for you. A lot of games happening tonight. I believe 10 across the league. It is a busy night for the premier double-A hockey league. Power play upcoming here for Newfoundland as Johnson gets it. Swings away from his man, leads it back up top. Cap check, looking to get through traffic. That one blocked. Off the end boards. Nice play with the skates by Sintazzo. That one gets by him. Scrum along the end boards, kept alive temporarily, and Chazowski able to free it up. Great play. Here's Kapchak, fakes, rips that one off of body and wine. There's Oren Sintazzo. Loose in the right wing corner, opposite side. Isaac Johnson is there battling Gordy Green. He'll get control. He's dummied along the end part for the pucks kept in by Kapchak. He'll hand it off on the side. There's a rip. That one off of body and wide again. Good job by the Adirondack defenders. 
staying inside these danger shooting lane areas. Green back again for Johnson. Isaac Johnson up top for Capcheck. Wheels it across, Johnson fakes, gets in, in toward the cage, just redirected wide. That puck took a ride off the dasher board. They hold it in again. Johnson, oh, what a move. In on goal. Centering feed. Oh, what a save. Chazowski robbed by the blocker of Mittens. Cleared away by Adirondack. These kill the end of the great A chances we've been waiting to see on these power plays. Oh, absolutely. A lot of great puck movement. No one's panicking. Looking to get into the slot, but also looking for that outside pass that's happening there, which we just saw just missed there and of course the traffic in front helping generate that opportunity. Zach O'Brien an advanced pass there gets it back for Marcus Power centering feed hopped over the stick of Pelton Weiss. 20 seconds to go on the power play that one. Off the stick of Marcus Power he'll trip as a fan up penalty coming up to the Thunder. I don't know if that was so much a trip or a player tripping over their own skates but either way what it'll happened? be 11 seconds of four on four. And then a buck 49 of another Growler penalty kill, which has been absolutely dynamite here. But with 10.51 to go and, uh, and a pesky team in town like the Adirondack Thunder, Skirving going over to talk with the referee. Probably say, just trying to understand where these calls are coming from. It gives the players a bit of a more of an opportunity to know where they can lean a little bit further in and where they need to back off just a little bit more. Four on four it is for the next 11 seconds. Face off to come inside the Newfoundland's hole. Skirving on the draw. He's out there with Plouffe, Melindy, and Hoffman Mark. MacArthur on the face off for Adirondack. Down to a knee. Puck tied up underneath everybody. And the Crowlers come away with the puck three wide. Here's Skirving trying to muscle his way into the offensive zone. He'll peel away from a check. And he'll peel all the way back into neutral ice as the Crowlers now begin their seventh penalty kill of the evening. To center, bouncing puck, hopped over the stick of Bluth. MacArthur, MacArthur turns it in. Opportunity, that one off the mask of Petrozelli, and cleared away by Hoffenmeyer. Crowley's doing a great job at killing this penalty, keeping the puck, looking to waste time with it, and we've got another penalty coming for the Crowley's. This one behind the play. Grasso. Touched up by Melindy, so another, the third five on three of the game for the Adirondack, but the fourth. Fourth, five on three for the game, third for the Adirondack. That's right. Sorry, I thought you were going in a different direction <laughs> there. <laughs> of course, the Growlers capitalizing on their 5-3. Words exchanged here, though, as Melindy heads to the box. Like I said, Melindy still plays the style of game that makes him effective, let's say. He had a bit of a smirk on his face going to the penalty box on that one, but nonetheless, two minutes up for the captain. 10.08 to go. I mean, I know the Growler's penalty kill is great and all. You can't keep giving any team this many opportunities to expect to win hockey games. Especially five on threes. They're rare to see in a game, let alone to see four. Rising up top as the Thunder have control. A minute and 10 seconds of five on three time. There's a bullet, that one. Off the goal pad of Petrozelli. Off the end boards and back into neutral ice. Lucky break for Newfoundland. In come the Thunder again. Good check thrown by Palmerlow. Take the man. Not the puck, and the puck will take care of itself. Cleared away by Palmerlow. Less than half a period to go. And 40 seconds left on the Marcus Power Minor. Irvine hands it off. Puck comes up for Masonis. Fakes it across to LaBerge. Down low, MacArthur goes behind the net. And a penalty on the play. Adirondacks going to the box for a high stick. And down in front of his netminder is Riley McCork. But right on top of it was the referee. An easy call this time. Is there blood? Court taking his time there having a chat. Two it is for high sticking. Thunder pulling ahead here in the shots, leading 23 to 20 now. I mean, having another five on three kind of gives you that opportunity to creep up there. And in 25 seconds time, we'll be back to four aside. We'll do that. Oh, this is the math I hate. We'll get to it when we get to it. Face off to the left of the Adirondack goal. Tender seconds. minutes. Thunder penalty to number 27, Tyler Irvine. Two minutes and 
One by the Thunder, out at center goes LeBaire. In over the line, good poke check, good active stick. Oh boy, that one almost fluttered off the stick of cap check. Bodies flying in the corner as the Crowlers. Hoffenmeyer gets control, sending Johnstone ahead. Johnstone. Trying to kill some time in the corner. Two seconds to go. Marcus Powers out of the box. The Growlers dodge another bullet. And Power, he's going to jump right back onto the ice. Nah, he'll peel off. 8.45 to go, and the fans saluting the penalty-killing effort here for Newfoundland. Look at that effort in the corner by Johnstone. He had that puck pinned in there without a whistle for a good 30 seconds. Back to four aside here for another 22 seconds, and that's when James Melindy is gonna storm out of the box. Here come the Thunder, sharp angle try for Long, that one missed. Off the end board, sent toward the front, that's poked away. The length of the ice, no icing, Masonis all the way back in his own zone. Five seconds to go on the Melindy minor. Pomerlo stays with Long, that one blocked in front by O'Brien, we're back. And now the Growlers have a power play for 45 seconds, and away they come into the Adirondack bench. Not even over the bench, it actually <laughs> went right through, through the open door. You don't see that very much, but with 7.59 to go. The cheer here is, I mean, the Growlers doing a great job at killing off another penalty. And I would just like to go back to the play that Hoffmeyer made there. He got the puck, and while most players would have took it off down the ice, he saw that they still had a penalty kill, pulled over to the side, eight time with the puck, and then threw it down low, where then John Stone ate it in the corner. Amazing. Just great nonverbal communication by these growlers. Really able to connect with each other. That could have been a penalty there, but hey, we've had enough, I think. <laughs> Bounced in on Petrozelli. He'll hang on to that one. Keith Petrozelli has very quietly turned in a pretty solid game here, cover to cover. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Thunder have definitely stepped up their game throughout the entire game. We saw it at the beginning of the second, it eased off a bit by the end, but here looking to capitalize on what opportunities they could, but the Growlers do what they do best, penalty killing, apparently. This team has a lot of strengths, but I agree. Their, their strongest strength may be the penalty kill. Here they come again, looking for another goal. O'Brien weaves his way. Oh, if that pass had landed. Good poke check by the Adirondack defender. Still 10 seconds of power play time. Hoffenmeyer into the left wing corner. Flipped it up top of the court for O'Brien. O'Brien waits, flings it in on goal. It's loose underneath the goal tender. He's got it. Nice save by Mid. This is the creativity and the hockey sense and smarts that we're seeing from Zach O'Brien. While he easily could have ripped something upstairs there, saw the traffic in front, you're going to put it down low, it's likely going to go off the skate, the stick, anything, and slide inside there. But I think I like that was his intention. The most about his creativity is he draws extra defenders towards him with his shiftiness, and all that does is it, it brings the opposition out of position a little more and frees up more growlers. It kind of ties back into the makes his teammates better comments we, we made earlier. Absolutely. I mean, that's exactly how he does it. A, a little shimmy in his own zone. Knocked down there by the growlers. Looking to hold the line here. We are back to five-a-side hockey as Gordy Green with 7.09 to go in the third period. Rings it around the end boards. Cap check. Trying to do his best Zach O'Brien impression there, keeping his man at bay, sends it down low to Darium Plouffe, who's got his first of the year. A three on five shorthanded goal. Can't hang on to that one. Great play by Melindy, touched by the Thunder and knocked in deep by Green. That, another just high IQ play. Very quick little high IQ play right there. Out in front for Newfoundland, sent Tassel on a great feed from Darian Plouffe, but it's stopped by Mittens again. Behind the net. Rolls out, Pomerlo, a big shoulder check there. Held at the line, Sintazzo snapped it down low. Darian Ploof there. Has a man draped all over him in Masonis. Trying to do the work with his skates, he'll kick it free. Prowlers still have possession there. That's Gordy Green into the high slot. Sintazzo sends it into the corner again. Ploof's gonna fight his man for it, it'll be cleared away. Knocked down by Pomerlo, back for Isaac Johnson. Johnson. Try to deke there, it's off the skate of carry in back inside the Newfoundland zone. What a flip pass attempt there, it's off the body, off the board, six minutes to go here in the third period, 24-21 of the shots in favor of the Adirondack Thunder, but it's the Crowlers ahead, 3-1, thanks to two second period goals. With almost nobody on the ice for either of them. 
exactly what I was saying. There was a lot of action in the second period there. We three goals really in total. That's right. Skirving a sharp angle try. That one missed. Melindy thought about pinching in off the line, but smartly stays his post. Knocked away by Hoffenmeyer back into neutral ice. Skirving. Knocked away, but stolen right back by Skirving. So strong on his stick. Here's Isaac Johnson. A backhand pass into neutral ice again. Growlers content to just see the seconds tick off the clock here. <clears throat> Here's Chazowski, a nice move into the offensive zone. Cuts to the middle of drive. That one off the stick of Mittens into the corner. To the line, knocked away. And Brennan cap check. Quickly ahead for Palmer Low, looking for his third point of the night. Hands for Marcus Power. Power in the right wing corner. He's bodied off the puck, taken by the Thunder. That's Thompson with it. Hands it across. At center, Pelton Pice, freed it back up. Nice little toe drag, and in come the Crowlers. O'Brien stops, weaves into the high slot, finds some room. His shot off a of body, second try to Marcus Power blocked as well. Four and a half minutes to go. Back come the Thunder, that's Rivera. His shot, a low one, guided away off the goal stick of Keith Petrozilli. McCourt, back in his own zone, patiently. Ahead now for Ty Pelton Vice. Across for power, he'll get it in. John Stone. Almost lost control of it there, put it into some shin pads, but Sentazzo able to get it back in. And he and John Stone give chase in the offensive zone. John Stone pins his man again, freeing it up quickly for Sentazzo. He's bodied hard in the corner, can't come away with this one. Played ahead for Grasso. Great stick check by Gordy Green. He'll steal the puck. At center. Touched in nicely. Santazzo buried away from the puck. No call there. Boneheaded play by Chukarov. Goes unnoticed. Three and a half minutes to go. James Melindy in his own zone. Shifted in. Gordy Green gives chase in the right wing corner. Behind the net. Isaac Johnson can't get to it. And it comes back for Masona. 3-10 to go here in the third period. The Growlers enjoying a two-goal lead. Trying to make it three is Johnson. That one off a stick. And over the net. In neutral ice, Palmer Lowe. Fans on a pass. Skirving. Tried to one-touch it ahead, but it's stolen. And poked away by Ploop. And he's off for the races again. Ploop. Tried to cut to the outside, had it poke checked off his stick by Masonis. And it's Adirondack. Bluff a little frustrated there behind the play. As we continue up ice, Smith in on Petrozelli, no rebound with 235. Rally doing a great job at keeping control of the play right now. They're really holding on to the puck. They're not just throwing anything at net when there's no need to give up possession of the puck, especially with only 235 left in the game. Looks like they're really trying to eat the clock and eat down on the opportunities the Thunder potentially could have when they are getting them. They're keeping the Thunder to the outside. So those shots coming at Petrozelli, they're really not keen opportunity ones. They're ones that Petrozelli's seeing all the way and able to move to the side. Pretty easy standard saves for him. Before we forget, I want to give a, a personal shout out to the sales manager for the Newfoundland Growlers, Kara Puttico. Her and her team worked through the night to try to get the tickets up and for sale. Not only that, so there were a handful of birthday parties that were scheduled for the former home. And not only, I find it so impressive, they were able to accommodate some birthdays in-house here. And for those who weren't able to be accommodated, they're currently at the rec room enjoying a, a birthday party that was organized by the Growlers for them at an alternate location for, for this exact evening. An, an over-the-top effort by the sales team. So, Kara, you should be so proud. I hope, I, I hope you're not hearing this because I hope you're relaxing somewhere <laughs> and taking the, this evening off. But again, a, a, a Herculean effort by our entire sales team to just get make this a packed barn and to take care of the kids' birthday parties to boot. Very impressive. Uh, proud to be on the same team as those folks. Absolutely. Hats off to them because not only for these kids is that going to be a memorable night, but for every fan here, I mean, I don't think anyone's disappointed in the hockey that they're seeing. Fans have been on their feet on and off throughout this game, cheering as penalties are killed, as goals are scored. 
it's just an exciting night after 608 days. We have an empty net for the Thunder, and it almost paid off there. 2.25 to go. Here comes an opportunity in the slot. That one blocked in front by Melindy. Bouncing puck kept alive by the Thunder, whose net is empty. And that one off is sticking out of play. Shots evened up here, 26-26, but Growler still leading this game 3-1. Looking like they were keeping majority of the possession, like we mentioned, for the last five minutes or so. But now with the play shifting down into the growler zone, not saying they're not keeping possession, but with that six man out there for the Thunder, a bit harder to do so. On the draw is Ty Pelton Bice. He's been dynamite in the faceoff dot tonight. Clear to the line, power. Nice play by the Adirondack forward LaBerge to boot that one back in. Located, lifted away. Is that going to hit the empty net? Not this time. So with two. Oh, two to go in the third period. That face-off coming all the way back in the Newfoundland zone. Before the Thunder had put their six men out there, we had seen their forward really hanging high. So leaving them short in the defensive zone, but trying to edge out to cut this lead from two to one. And you know they say a two-goal lead is always the worst to have in hockey That's game. That's what they say. One goal and they're back in and two minutes left. There's still that opportunity for the Thunder. Which is exactly what happened during the Adirondack home opener. They pulled the goalie. Mind you, they had a power play as well. But they finished it off. Save made Petrozelli. Bouncing puck. Pelton Bice. He'll get a try. No. Wide of the cage. Off the end boards. Another icing. But 146 to go. Marcus Power after that first shot. Not this last one here. It looked like he was really hoping for that one to sneak in there. Also worth noting here, this might be wishful thinking on my part, Keith Petrozelli has scored an empty net goal in his career. He is a heck. And that's another clear there by the Growlers. No one even chasing this one down, except the Thunder, of course, 139. It may be the remaining. longest minute 39 of this <laughs> hockey game. Yeah, with the Muskegon Lumberjacks, I believe it was, uh, Keith Petrozelli. I, I haven't seen him try, uh, but uh, I, we know he's got it in him. It's on my broadcaster bingo card <laughs> that at some point in my career, I have to call a goalie goal. We're seeing Side four five on threes on it. <laughs> and there's a clear. This one has a chance. This one is in. A buck 29 to go. Was that Noel Hoffenmeyer? A clearing attempt with no... No I don't think intention. he was aiming for it. That's no. what I'm trying to say. He didn't even try, but he's got his first multi-goal game as a growler. The growlers score four. Again, their average will stay the same. Four goals per game. 129 to go. Surely that's got to be enough. You would think so. I mean, the Growlers with their 4-0 record looking to improve that to five tonight, and they lead the league with that. They're the only team in the ECHL that's undefeated at this point. Great point. I would have loved that point even better if we said it at the final buzzer. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, flipped in on Petrozelli. Oh, I thought if the net was empty that he may have had a, again, wishful thinking. I'm getting way too far ahead of myself here. 115 to go. Masonas plays it ahead. Cap check. He's been excellent tonight. John Stone, he's been a wonder in the offensive end. Oh, that puck right into the face of Chazowski. He's going off. One minute to go. What are we seeing here? Mittens back in net, looking like we've got five on five hockey happening here again. Thunder realizing they've got two more games on the road here. No need to waste all the energy tonight. There's a shot into the glove of Mittens. He'll hang on as Skirving was on the doorstep. 42 and a half seconds remain here in the third period. And before time runs out, Kellyanne, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to kick off this uh, home season here with you. We've had a lot of fun here in the booth tonight. Hopefully all you folks at home have had some fun as well. And uh, thank you again for joining the squad here. Happy Anytime. Have. Thanks for having me. Back up top, Melindy. Maybe time for one more. He'll roll this one in. Sentazzo. Off his stick for Isaac Johnson. Back for Oren Sintazo behind the net for Gordy Green. Under 30 seconds to play. Melindy holds the line, sends it back in. It rolls along the left wing boards, and these fans, they know they're about to see their Newfoundland Growlers in their new temporary home here at Conception Bay South Arena. They're moving to their feet for the Growlers. 
The best start in team history will roll on. It's a 4-1 win here tonight over the Adirondack Thunder. Make it five straight wins. The unbeaten streak is alive. What a complete effort, Kellyanne, here tonight from this hockey club. Oh, absolutely. There wasn't one player that really took it above the rest there. I mean, we might have noted a few here and there, but there was 100% two-way play from every player out there. Defensemen playing offensively, offensemen playing defensively, just all around a solid, solid game. Final shots on goal, 28 apiece here. 4-1 win for the Newfoundland Prowlers. Who would be your pick for uh, three stars here? Zach O'Brien. I agree. I think Hoffenmeyer tonight, that rocket of a shot. And he's, he's been pretty solid on the line, for sure. And I, two goals. Tristan Pomerlo, goal and an assist. Gary and Plouffe had a three-on-five goal. That earned some. So we're going to give out five or six stars, oh, yeah. I think, tonight. Yeah. I really Cap like. really drawing players in. To move I off. thought John Stone's effort pinning the puck in that offensive zone. He's done that so good. He's so strong with the puck. That's worthy of. I mean, if we still gave out hardest working player, he might get my my nomination for that. Absolutely. Keith Petrozelli at 27 saves. He has yet to allow more than one goal. Wrap your mind around that. That, that is outstanding. Mind you, I, not to discredit him at all, but no, I wouldn't say all 28 shots were a great opportunity. I agree with that. But nonetheless, I mean. But he easily, his head could have got out of this game at the end of that first period when point. he didn't see a lot of action. So to not completely cool off, to shake off that first goal really quickly. Turn around, solid game all around. The crowd is still standing here. I love that. And of course, the Growlers victory song. Long time, regard, doesn't matter what building we're in, we're heaving away after we come away with the W. Gotta love it. Hard not to clap along to this one, as many are right now. So we'll stick around for your three stars. Then we will sign off for tonight, because we got Two more games coming up this weekend. It's a busy weekend for sure for the Growlers, but for the Thunder, this is their first road road game. So That's right. Interesting to see that this is the first game that came out really hot, really aggressively, cooled down a little bit, but try to pick up the speed in the second period. And here comes Zach O'Brien, must be tonight's third star. He'll salute the crowd. Great game, Obi. Brian was the official hardest working player, ah. which I, I'm okay with that. Oh, absolutely. Jerry yeah. Poole is the number three star. I mean, I think that's automatic if you score a three on five short hitter. Oh, absolutely. And plus, he was extremely good down low in front of the net. Tristan Pomerlo's first pro goal plus an assist is enough for second star here tonight, throwing out the peace sign. I love it. No Hoffenmeyer. That slap shot alone, pure perfection. He's your number one star and well deserved here tonight. Just his hockey sense as well. When he was on the side there and the puck came out, he easily could have went with the puck like many would have. But instead, he drew to the far side, away from the play, held on to the puck, cut down on the time that they were going to have the penalty kill, and then put it down low. We'll give you a real quick third period and post-game summary, and then and we're all going to go have a nap, I think. 4-1 was your score, and the only goal in the third was the empty netter for Noel Hoffenmeyer, his third of the season, showing his unassisted at 18.32. Four penalties that frame. Irvine for slashing for Adirondack at 7.19. Power for tripping at 9.09. Melindy for slashing at 9.52. And Irvine again for high sticking at 10.44. The Growlers finished the game one for seven on the power play. Better than five and a half percent, I suppose. <laughs> and six for six on the flippant penalty kill. That's incredible. Their percentage has got to be all right, there you go, the final tonight, the Newfoundland Growlers for the Adirondack Thunder 1. Newfoundland, an undefeated 5-0 and oh so far, and I'm not going to say much about that because I don't want to drink the team, but uh, to recap, the three stars. Yeah, so our third star tonight was number 11, Darian Plouffe, who scored that beautiful mm. shorthanded goal on the 5-on-3 yeah. there in the second period, and that one came off 
debatably an even more beautiful pass yes. from Tristan Pomerlo, who was our second star of the game tonight. And to no one's surprise, our first star of the evening, number 22, Noel Hoffenmeyer. He is a first year growler, yes. and he is off to a red hot start this season, Bill. In just yeah. four games, actually, no, it's now five games in. Right. He had two goals and one assist tonight on top of the one goal, two assists. He already has wow. six points in his first five games as a growler. And doing it from the blue line yep. makes it all the more impressive. Just an incredible game from Noel Hoffenmeyer. He yep. was good, not just in the offensive zone, as we yep. did see him bury two, including that empty netter at the end. Right. He was great in his own zone, really protecting in by the growler's net and making sure pucks moved out and up the ice. It's a great game here at the CBS Arena. And just recapping some other scores from uh, around the league in the North Division, uh, Reading. 2-1 lead over Trois Rivières, and they just finished the first period, and Florida has a 1-0 lead over Maine. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow here on Rogers TV. Puck drop at 7 o'clock once again, and I'm sure you're going to be joining us for some of that excitement. I cannot wait. All right, so we hope to see you then. Remember, on Rogers TV, and you can also go to their website and view them live on YouTube all around the world. Thanks for joining us tonight once again. The final Newfoundland Growlers 4 Adirondack Thunder 1. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.
quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle bread, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Hello, I'm Carl Welts. My guest today is a journalist with the Independent.ca. She's also the program director for CHMR Radio. She has studied gender, feminist, and women's topics, and she is a trans activist. It's my pleasure to welcome Rhea Rollman to the program. Hello, Hi, Carl. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Um, now, I know that you spent most, if not all, of your grade school years here in St. John's, but uh, can you tell me a little bit about um, where you were born and your, your growing up years, about your parents and your family? Sure. Uh, so I was actually born in Ontario, uh, Hamilton. And, uh, but we moved here when I was very little, so before I started school. So I, I've essentially grown up here, spent all my life here. And uh, yeah, my childhood was pretty normal in most regards. I, I had a real obsession with cats, I remember. <laughs> I used to play by myself at the park or down the road, as you did in the 80s, and uh, I would always bring home these armies of stray cats uh, to give them homes. Uh, so I, I spent a lot of time talking to cats when I was growing up. Uh, what about school? Did you enjoy school? Were you involved in lots of extracurricular activities, that sort of thing? I did. Um, you know, I mean, I lived for summer vacation and snow days like anyone, but I, I enjoy, I have really positive memories of school. I went to St. Andrews Elementary and then uh, McPherson Junior High and uh, Bishop's College for high school. And, you know, I did French immersion in uh, junior high and high school, and we had a really close-knit, uh, you know, cohort of students. Uh, we all got along. I had lots of, lots of good friends. Um, I was never really into sports, but it was the creative um, pursuits that I was more interested in. So I did a lot of uh, creative writing and debating and public speaking. I was on the debate team. Um, we won some provincial and national championships. Uh, so that was the sort of stuff that I was into growing up. Now, when you were 10, you began to have these thoughts that maybe you were meant to be a girl. Um, can, you, can you describe for me what those thoughts were, were and how, how you were feeling at that time, age 10? So I remember with crystal clarity uh, the moment that I, I, I kind of, I, 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 I had this realization. And I mean, I, th I think I'd had these thoughts uh, before, earlier, but the moment when it, it kind of all came together for me, uh, it was in grade four. And uh, we had a female teacher. Um, and I remember we were having one of these just fun discussions about what do you want to be when you grow up? And um, I, I just suddenly realized that whenever I, you know, when I was thinking about future careers I might be interested in, whenever I thought of myself as an adult, I could only picture myself as a, as a woman. Um, I couldn't picture myself as an, as an adult uh, grown up man. And um, this really, uh, it, you know, it was really jarring. It, it, it was almost like glass shattering, you know, in, in my head once I realized this because I was so confused. And I remember the teacher, you know, turning to me and, and asking, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I just said, I want to be you. Um, and she was flattered and thought I wanted to be a teacher. But really, I was struggling with this realization that, you know, I only saw myself uh, as, as an adult woman. And I didn't understand. It didn't make sense to me at the time. So Was it scary? It, it, was, it was confusing more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I knew this wasn't 
uh, normal by any stretch of what we were being taught in school. I mean, we were taught nothing about gender or sexuality or anything like that back in these days. Um, and I, I really kind of struggled with it. You know, I went home, I, I thought about it, didn't make sense to me. Um, I, I, you know, I, I kind of knew not to talk to other people about it because this was not something uh, that, that other people seemed to speak about. And um, I, I thought, well, okay, maybe it's just a weird thought you're having, <laughs> you know, shelve it, it'll go away. But it didn't, you know, it became, um, bigger and bigger, you know, it, it lingered. And especially at that age when uh, school activities were starting to, to get gendered, you know, they started splitting gym class into boys and girls, and so many of our activities were increasingly gendered, and you have students who start going through puberty. And increasingly, I, I, I felt that I was on the wrong side of that divide, you know, um, and this really confused me, uh, and I, I didn't know what to think of it. Do you remember when you found out that it was possible for people to change their gender. And, and did the fact that you were in St. John's, Newfoundland, and not Montreal or Toronto, kind of dampen your enthusiasm, for want of a better word, for the idea? Yeah. Um, you know, again, I think it, it's important to remember this was, you know, the 80s yes. and the 90s, and things are so different then. Uh, you know, I, I go to elementary schools today, and, you know, kids talk about, you know, gender identity, and it's wonderful. But back then, there was no education about any of this. It wasn't spoken of. Um, I think the first time I realized that this was something beyond just a, a thought in my head, um, I came across a, a newspaper, you know, my parents left the newspaper lying around, and I came across an article one day, it was in elementary school around this time, and it was about, uh, I think, a trans um, tennis star, and it, it kind of briefly encapsulated the story of her life and her coming out uh, and transitioning. And so this was the first time I had any inkling that, oh, you know, this this is something that exists in the world. <laughs> um, there's other people besides me who, who seem to have this experience. And, you know, it, it helped provide clarity. Um, it was also quite terrifying because I realized it wasn't just some random weird thought that was going to go away eventually. Um, so, so that's the first time I, I realized this. Um, you know, the, the internet uh, was not really around at the time. No. It, it existed, but... Mm -hmm not in the form it is today. Very no. few people used it, and there was no social media like today. Um, I spent a lot of time in the library, so I you know, hunted out encyclopedias and was able to put together bits and pieces of what trans identity was all about. And then um, I was actually one of, I think, the early people who started using the internet here. There was a cohort of us who were online, and we all knew each other <laughs> in the city, you know? Um, and once I was able to go online, I came across, you know, accounts uh, from other cities, other countries, people talking about their experiences, transitioning, uh, trying to access hormones and surgery. So this really opened up a whole new door, and I was able to understand, you know, my own experience a lot more and start to get a sense of what options were out there and how other people were dealing with this stuff. Yeah. And, um <clears throat> I can't imagine that there were that many uh, out trans people in St. John's uh, when you were younger. So you really didn't have anybody who was going through what you were going through, or who had gone through what you were going through to, to talk to, right? No, I mean, I, I didn't know anyone. You know, I was in school. There was, again, no information in you school. You must have had a yearning this. to speak to somebody. I did. And, well, actually, I, I don't know if I would have because I was so freaked out by this that, you know, it seemed very paramount in my mind that this was something not to let other people know about, you know, to try to hide this strange struggle that I was increasingly having. Um, I, I, I came, you know, the internet helped a lot because I, I, there were so many accounts that people put out there. This is my experience. This is what I'm going through. And so just reading those accounts of people in other places helped immensely. And it was hard being in Newfoundland because you know, these were people living in Toronto, in American cities, you know, Vancouver. 
and they were having a really tough time of trying to access supports. Mm. Here in Newfoundland, you just felt, you know, um, like, like you were off the edge of the world. <laughs> you were so well, far yeah, away. Well, yeah, I mean, I was going to ask you why, why you put off transitioning, because you, you, you've only transitioned since, well, really, the beginning of the pandemic, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you waited a while to do this, mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering why you waited so long. I assume it's because the supports weren't there. That's basically it, I think. Um, you know, and, and there were a few reasons. We, I remember in grade six, um, we had a really homophobic teacher and transphobic teacher um, who, uh, you know, he would just sometimes break off the lesson plan and just start going into rants about gay people and trans people. Um, very angry. Uh, in, in the Newfoundland school system? Yeah, yeah. In grade six? In grade six, yeah. And um, you know it, it, it was upsetting. I mean, we were just kids. We didn't really understand what he was talking about. Um, I, I, I'm I'm blown away. I, I'm actually appalled to, to hear that. Yeah, it was frightening. And, and like I said, we didn't really understand a lot of what he was talking about. But we knew that okay, this this man is angry. You know, this is like hate coming from this, this man. Man He's, should have been fired. Yeah, but you know. Um, it, 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 no one, no one thought or, or acted like it was unusual, and so so that really, you know, I mean, we we, we kind of knew that okay, no one should be this angry about other human beings, but it really underscored um, this this need to kind of not tell other people, um, and uh, in my own case, you know, I, I thought very seriously about coming out and transitioning. Um, when I was in high school, I really wrestled with that decision. I wanted to. Um, I, you know, I dreamt about it, but um, reading the accounts of people who were doing this, you know, this was the early 90s, trans healthcare was in medi the medieval ages, really. You know, uh, people in Toronto, for example, would, they had to go before boards of psychiatrists. They had to prove that they were trans. There were these weird rules about, you know, living uh, in, you know, in an outwardly presenting the, the gender you're transitioning to before you would even be approved for hormones or surgery. You had to do that for years, which meant you had to um, act out this very caricatured, stereotyped version of femininity for trans women. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was just, there were no human rights protections, so trans people were being, you know, fired right and left from jobs when they came out. I mean, a lot of that still goes on, but at yeah. least there are now. Human rights protection here was granted about seven years ago. That's correct. And, and medical support some medical support a couple of years ago, I guess. Yeah, the, the medical supports have grown. Um, the, about two years ago, the MCP policy was overhauled to provide additional supports and, and to try to make things a bit more accessible. Mm. Um, did you, um, before you transitioned, started your transition, were there times when you felt like you were in a sense, pretending to be a man? That's a really, I think, apt way of putting it. Um, you know, I, I think when you grow up experiencing, uh, you know, gender dysphoria and you grow up as a, a trans identity, you really get a clear sense of how gender roles are, you know, are socially constructed, um, you know, and yeah, you really felt like you were, in my case, felt like I was performing masculinity. It was all an act. Um, and I think you become very good at performing it, you know, um, because you're very concerned that other people perceive you in this way. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I, and it's ironic, you know, I would off, as I got older, I would, you know, people would say, oh, you've got such a healthy version of masculinity. I'd be asked to speak about healthy masculinities, you know, uh, or serve on committees dealing with that. And on the one hand, it was flattering, but on the other, it was very painful because, you know, I, I felt I, I couldn't explain to people, you've got it all wrong, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's all just an act. Um, did, did that lead to mental health issues, uh, depression? It, it, yeah, I, I wrestled with that. You know, every few years, I would come very close to, to wanting to come out and transitioning, and I would get very depressed about this, you know, about not being out. Um, and, and I think it also made it really difficult to have authentic relationships with people. Um, you know, when you're constantly acting, when you're constantly concerned about having this big 
private side of yourself that you can't share with anyone, it makes it hard to really engage honestly with people. You know, you feel everything is kind of an act. And I think that, you know, that's how I felt. You know, it, it, I had very positive social relationships. You know, I, I was fairly popular, I think, but you know, I, I didn't really feel like I was connecting authentically with, with people around me. So what was it that finally made you decide this is the time? Now I have to, to do it. Well, like I, I said, you know, I've been I would struggle with this every few years, and um, it's ironic. You know, growing up, there were no supports, nothing in the healthcare system or the education system, uh, no human rights protections, and all of this. You know, I, I decided I didn't want the hassle of I didn't want my entire life to be arguing with psychiatrists. Look, you know, and so I um, decided not. I continually made the decision not to come out. And then in more recent years, when human rights protections started coming in, when the healthcare system started improving uh, trans healthcare, um, I started, you know, I thought again about coming out, but then I, I told myself, nah, you know, you're too old. <laughs> uh, you know, hormones are, are less effective the older you get, um, surgeries become more complicated, you're ensconced in professional relationships and you don't know what will happen to those if you transition. So I, I would convince myself, you know, you know, too late. <laughs> um, and uh, it was a few years ago, maybe three years ago, I was reading an article. Um, I think it was published in Vice. And it was an article about older people transitioning. And I'm so glad that this article was written um, because it just floored me. Uh, you know, th and these were interviews with folks who were way older than me. You know, people in their 50s and 60s. There was a, a trans woman in her 80s who transitioned in her 80s, uh, surgical transition too, I believe. And it, you know, I was just amazed because I realized two things. Um, first of all, these people, you know, reading these people talk about how positive their lives became after their transition they transitioned i realized that wow okay you know it can still make a big difference in your life no matter how old you are um, being able to come out and, and live authentically um, it, it just improved their lives and i realized there's no real age limit on that and the other thing i realized you know i had always kind of hoped i guess that if i just ignored this it would eventually go away and i'd stop wrestling with this um, but that doesn't happen you know and reading about people in their 70s and 80s transitioning i realized it was never going away i was going to always be dealing with this um, and i didn't want to be you know in my 60s looking back thinking gosh you know you could have transitioned decades ago why didn't you so by the time I finished reading that article, I, I think I had kind of subconsciously decided, okay, you know, you've, you've got to do this. Who was the first person you told? I told my partner at the time first. Um, you know, we had had uh, numerous discussions about gender and sexuality, and, and so, I, you know, I, I had a, a pretty good sense that they would be okay um, with me coming out. It was still scary, very scary, to, to articulate this thing that you've been you know, feeling for so many years and that you have kept private and secret. Um, but I told them, and um, like I had hoped, you know, their response was just so positive, enthusiastic. Uh, you know, they, they were amazing. Um, uh, so, so, so that went beautifully. What about your parents, your family, your friends? Yeah, that, that came later. You know, I gradually increased the, the pool of people who I told um, once, I, once I had, you know, started medically transitioning and, and, and stuff. Um, and that went well, too. You know, I was surprised. I, I, I thought before coming out that, you know, I, I worried about regretting it, you know, because once you, you let this out and once you um, share this, you can't really take it back, you know. Um, and so I, I worried that I would regret telling people, but I, I never did. Um, I, I just felt this immense sense of freedom and, and liberation. Coming out for LGBTQ people can be, um, sometimes it can be a very positive experience, and, and other times it can be not so positive, and, and there are dreadful consequences in some instances. Uh, and you need emotional support. And uh, you, you get that 
emotional support quite often from our community, the LGBTQ community. Was that the case for you? There are wonderful supports here, absolutely. Um, you know, it was a weird time to be transitioning because I, I really uh, kicked into my transition. The pandemic began um, uh, shortly after I, I, I had come out. And um, so you realize how much of your identity is the product of how people perceive you. And when you're not talking to people, not seeing people, you know, it's, it's uh, how, do you, how do you transition? Um, so it was a weird time transitioning during the pandemic. But there are, you know, there's uh, great local organizations now. Trans Support NL is a wonderful group. They've got support groups for all age levels in all different parts of the province. There's, you know, Quadrangle, uh, which is uh, working toward a, a, a queer community center. There's, um, you know, all kinds of, of organizations popping up, and they provide wonderful supports. The internet was really big as well. You know, um, the internet is a a fraught place to be when you're you're trans or, or queer. Um, there's a lot of hate you can experience there, so you really have to be careful. But there's immense support, and there's huge communities there. So connecting with people online, uh, people who were going through the exact same moment of transition that I was, was really helpful. And having that support network, seeing how people are navigating these things in other parts of the country or other parts of the world, really helps broaden your perspectives and, and is an immense support. I'm assuming that one of the first things you had to access was hormone therapy. Uh, was that relatively easy for you to do, or? I was really lucky, you know. Um, it's interesting, because once I, uh, once I came out, and I hear this experience from other trans people too, um, once I came out, my gender dysphoria became really intense, and I, I felt this urgent need to do something about it, you know. And uh, so I, I needed to access, start accessing hormones and start working towards surgery. Um, every country you know, is, is different. And in some countries, there are horrible, it's, it's horribly difficult to access hormones. You have waiting lists that are years long in order to access trans healthcare. And, and that is you know, really difficult. It's, I, I, every every week, pretty much, you know, I, I read about uh, you know people, often young people, who you know came out and then we're told it'll be another ten years before you can access you know hormones, um, and you know it costs lives because people need these supports uh, as as soon as they can access them. Uh, in Canada, things are a lot better than in a lot of other countries. Um, there are still huge problems and gaps, but Canada is, you know, um, definitely one of the better countries. So in my case, I, I had, I was lucky to have a family doctor. I didn't feel comfortable going to my family doctor though, because, um, the, you know, I, I, I was always dealing with these very uh, uh, heterocentric, uh, cis-centric, uh, you know male medical uh, residents. I, I didn't get any sense of diversity or inclusion you know, from the clinic. And so I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel safe coming out there. Um, I didn't know where to go. My partner uh, rem had worked at Planned Parenthood, suggested I call them, because my partner remembered trans people going to trans Planned Parenthood. So I did, I called them. They were wonderfully supportive. Um, you know their services are hugely in demand, so there's there's often waiting lists. Uh, they told me they could connect me with a doctor, but it would be about six weeks, and even six weeks seemed like an eternity. You know, I, I it was so painful. But I made the appointment, and then uh, they called back a few minutes later, and I, I'm glad I answered the phone because it was an unlisted number. But they they explained that you know just so you know. Uh, our doctors cannot, uh, they can renew hormone prescriptions, but they can't actually start you on the path. They can't initially provide that diagnosis. Um, and so they directed me to Dr. Sinnott, uh, Dr. Mary Lynn Sinnott, who's probably the, the trans healthcare expert in this province. Uh, so she had a clinic uh, on a Friday, I remember. I called her office. Uh, the assistant, uh, Jacinta, answered, just so wonderful. Uh, warm and, and, and supportive. And she said, well, okay, you know, you come in first thing Monday morning and we'll, we'll take care of you. And, and I literally cried because, you know, <laughs> the thought of being able to, uh, you know, meet the doctor uh, just two days away was, was and massive. And after, after you were on the hormones, uh, did you feel different mentally? Yeah. Um, 
I think part of it was just the psychological knowledge I was doing something about this finally. That was certainly a relief. But um, there's something more to it as well. You know, the, the hormones, the physical changes. I, I, before I started, I sometimes worried that what if I regret this? You know, what if I am weirded out by this? Uh, you know, um, so I was very afraid. But once I started them, you know, um, it, it felt so natural, it felt right, you know, as your body starts changing uh, and you start taking hormones, it, it felt like I was finally writing things, you know, I was, um, that, that I was feeling comfortable in my body for the first time ever, really. Uh, and that was a really remarkable thing to experience. Now, uh, expressing yourself as a woman is a process as well. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been immensely rewarding, but, but challenging too, because I think, you know, if, if you go through this puberty in your teenage years, uh, you know, most people, you know, you have years to figure out who you are, um, you know, how, what your personality is like, how you, your style, you know. Um, you've got years uh, as a teenager to trial and error, you know, to discover yourself, to change uh, how you present yourself. But, you know, when you transition later in life, there's almost a, a social expectation that, you know, <laughs> overnight you can uh, suddenly appear in a, in a different role from that in which people are familiar with you. And that can be daunting, you know. It, 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 uh, it, I felt authentic and real and natural for the first time ever, but also, you know, simple things like figuring out what clothing styles you wear or, you know, your, uh, how to present yourself to others, you know, w could, could be kind of challenging. And amidst all that, you're also dealing with um, people's external reactions, you know, and some people are great, other people, they're, they might be misgendering you, uh, especially early on in transition. Um, and so dealing with that experience can be really, uh, it can be a lot, you know, uh, to go through all at once in this very truncated period of time. Rhea, we've run out of time. I want to thank you very much for coming on the program. I know you were a little bit nervous about doing this interview. and. Uh, uh, you did a great job, and I really appreciate uh, what you've had to say to Thank us you. today. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this edition of Carl Wells Point to Point. We'll see you again next time. If you want convenience, Marie's Money Mart is here for you. A one-stop shop for a variety of products, homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus check out our freshly baked artisan breads and single-serve desserts exclusively at our in-store bakery on Frecker Drive. With 25 locations, wherever you go, there we are. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Sundays. I'm giving up everything here in Seattle for a man that was cheating on me. Love makes you crazy. New couples. We met on a language exchange site. She's afraid that I was going to sell her organs. Bigger stakes. I will never go back to Ethiopia after what you have done to me and Avi. You're not going to keep telling me you're going to marry me. That's it! 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way. All new Sundays at 8 on TLC.
This is Rogers TV. Interest payments were going up. Creditors were calling. 